Great Hockey from the Great Western Farm in Inglewood, California. Tonight, the Colorado Avalanche in town to open the Kings' 1995 season. Larry Robinson, a mainstay in Montreal Canadian lore. He was considered one of the all-time clutch players in the game. His Canadian teams of the 70s among the best ever, winning five Stanley Cups in seven years. Wayne Gretzky is the greatest player in the history of the National Hockey League. He ruled the sport in the 80s, collecting two Conn Smythe trophies while leading the Edmonton Oilers to four cups in five seasons. Last year, Larry Robinson drank from the cup again as an assistant in New Jersey. Tonight, he and the Great One unite as kings and try to bring cup number one to Los Angeles. We welcome you inside tonight's venue. This is the Great Western Forum in Inglewood, California. Game two of our Deuce doubleheader, the Colorado Avalanche and the Los Angeles Kings. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Goldberg. We welcome you to tonight's telecast, game two of our doubleheader. When you talk about the Los Angeles Kings, the first word that comes to mind, stability. New ownership is in place, and for the first time in a couple of seasons, the Kings can concentrate with their jobs on the ice and not all the distractions that have come away from the ice surface for Los Angeles the last couple of seasons. The Colorado Avalanche, on the other hand, a new home, a new division, a new star. But the same old story. This is basically the same team that was in Quebec one year ago, number two team in the National Hockey League. They did get ousted, though, in the first round of the playoffs. Joining me for another season, Brian Engblom. We look forward to a great year together, Brian. And, you know, you talk about the loss last night, potentially for the whole season, to Uwe Krupp, the defenseman of the Colorado Avalanche. And it makes you think of the power play, because one of the things that is really a focus right now for Colorado is their power play. If you talk to Mark Crawford, that's the one thing he's thinking about all the way along. They want a quarterback for that power play. They brought in John Slaney from Washington. Now, Slaney played for Crawford in junior. Slaney, things didn't work out for him very well in Washington, so they're hoping that he will step through the door and do it here. There's the other man, Claude Lemieux. He came over in the Wendell Clark trade, of course, and he is going to bring that leadership. Sometimes players don't want to hear what he has to say, but Claude Lemieux is going to do whatever he has to do. Well, the Los Angeles Kings, a couple of years ago, were in the Stanley Cup Finals. They have missed the playoffs the last two seasons. One of the big reasons they missed it one year ago is because they could not win at home in this building. Absolutely. They have to turn that around. They always start with a, a home record, a lot of games at home. They have to get it going at home. If they don't, they're always playing catch-up, catch-up, and it just hasn't worked. They have to win division games as well, too. That's really been a curse for them the last couple of years. You have to beat those teams that are immediately above you and immediately below you, or you just don't make the playoffs. Well, we know Larry Robinson is the new head coach. One of the personnel changes, a trade with the Washington Capitals that brings a good scorer and Dimitri Christich and a goaltender in Byron Defoe here to L.A. Absolutely. Only a couple of changes to this year's team, but Christich is a regular 30-goal score. This will certainly help the Kings. He's going to play a lot with Wayne Gretzky. Who knows how many goals he might score there. Byron Defoe, especially with the fact that Kelly Rudy is hurt and can't play in this starting game, and perhaps not the next one either, has had a very good training camp. He's only got about 10 NHL games of experience, but they think he can do it. Well, one guy they think can do it again is Wayne Gretzky, number 99. This is a very pivotal year, a year in which Wayne Gretzky is looking forward to playing for new head coach, Larry Robinson. You, know, you guys got to play together a couple of years ago, and Larry was kidding with somebody this morning that the big difference now is that he gets to tell you what to do instead of you telling him what to do now that he's the coach instead of uh, teammates. Huh? <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, you know, people said, how do you play, how can you play with somebody you played with? And I think we were good friends when we played, and we respected each other as teammates, and when we played against each other, we respected each other. I think the big thing is that Larry knows me as a person that I, I respect authority. Larry's my coach, and what he wants me to do for his hockey club, that's what I'm gonna do, and we're gonna have no problems at all. I understand he's my boss, and that's the way it is. And there are going to be some changes. I mean, he said publicly that you and Yari will both see less ice time. Is, is that okay with you, Wayne? Is, is that maybe better to, to have Wayne Gretzky play more effective minutes, uh, quality as opposed to quantity at this point in your career? Well, I think that um, the big thing is, is my minutes are not going to be drastically changed. I mean, we're not talking going from 25 minutes to 10 minutes a game. I think you're going to see in the exhibition games, I, I played approximately 19, 20 minutes a game, which maybe not too much less than I played in the past so 
Winning is what it's all about, and if we're winning, then I don't care what happens. Um, bottom line, though, is I still want to be in those situations that, you know, when we're down a goal in the minute left or up a goal in the minute left, those are things that motivate me and make me go and drive me forward. And I think that we're going to have no problems, Larry and I, and whatever it takes to win, and that's what it's all about. How do you avoid this year all the questions? And I guess I'm going to be guilty of it right now. Is this your last year? And, and does it bother you, the speculation and, and the no, speculation within no. yourself? Like I said, the people have been really nice to me in my career. I have no, uh, my career, I have no problem with people asking me. I, I guess how it work, how it's going to play out is it's going to be an open book. Um, I've said it publicly. If I have a very bad year, if I have a poor year, it will be my last year. Uh, but I expect to have a good year, and then we'll, we'll see what happens at the end. I'm not saying that uh, I'll come back after that, but I'm saying that I'm going to have a good year. How about the adage, though, you can't go out on, how can Wayne Gretzky go out on a bad year? That doesn't seem to bother you? No, I'm not going to go on a bad year. I'm going to have a good year. Is that great news for the Kings or what? Nobody in the history of the game has been better than that guy. Number 99 about to make his 1995 NHL debut for his new head coach, Larry Robinson, who will visit with his former teammate, my partner, Brian Engblom, when we return to Los Angeles. The neighborhoods, the backbone, the spirit of Philadelphia, where Jim Kenney was born, and for whom city councilman at large Jim Kenney has fought. On the council, Kenny has fought to fund our local libraries. Kenny toughened the anti-graffiti and vandalism laws to protect the neighborhoods of the city he loves. And Kenny restored funding for alley lights to keep the criminals away. On election day, re-elect Jim Kenny, fighting for our neighborhoods, because Philadelphia's neighborhoods are his home. It's the Breakfast of Champions, Cartoon Network style, Carrot Top AM Mayhem, weekdays 7 to 9, only on Cartoon Network. And stop by Franklin Mills Mall from October 6th through October 27th and receive a free special preview video of Carrot Top's AM Mayhem with $50 or more in purchases from mall merchants. Visit Franklin Mills Mall Information Desk for complete details. And watch Carrot Top's AM Mayhem weekday mornings from 7 to 9, only on Cartoon Network. Involves a sender, a receiver, a medium, and a message. Listen carefully. Did you hear that? Drops it in and the game is underway. Saved by Bernie. Oh, oh, Great game, huh? Oh, yeah, but listen, I can't talk to you, okay? Because I don't want to miss anything. Would you hand me my soda, please? Yeah. It's the weapon to the crowd for another great souvenir. That was my puck. That was my puck. Huh? Yeah, the coolest game on earth. Yes, did you see no. No. Did you plan this? Bowman, the all-time winningest coach in NHL history. If he's the teacher, look at his students who have gone on to succeed in the National Hockey League. Jacques Lemaire and Larry Robinson won the Stanley Cup together last year with the New Jersey Devils. And there is number three, my partner, Brian Engblom. Similar stature to Larry, his former teammate. Brian? Thanks very much, Mike. And with me is uh, Los Angeles Kings head coach, Larry Robinson. And Larry, when I say head coach, I look at you, and I know you're the coach now, but I think of you. You and I were teammates in Montreal. And no head jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Reflect back uh, to the teams that we played on in Montreal, and certainly you're a lot older than I am, and you run a lot more teams than I was, but what a cast of characters that we had there over oh. those years. Is there anything that really stands out in your mind, any event or any of those players that really stand out? Not that we could talk about. <laughs> We had a great, like you say, we had a great cast of characters, but I think the one thing that stands out is that um, uh, we were like a family. Uh, I mean, we spent so much time together, and we did so many things even away from the rink. And I think to be successful, and uh, <clears throat> unfortunately in today's game, I don't think that you really get time to do that kind of stuff because you're traveling, and uh, and you're on, it seems like you're on the road more than you're at home. But um, if there was one thing that I want, wanted to take away from uh, those times that we had in Montreal was the, the camaraderie and and I think that you can build strong teams and, and strong teamwork from that camaraderie. Reminds me you still owe me 15 bucks too but you are one of the five current NHL coaches that played under Scotty Bowman. 
and uh, it was fun to win under Scotty, but it wasn't always fun to play. How will you be different than Scotty, and what will you take from him? Well, uh, you know, the thing that Scotty did is that um, he got you uh, so wound up and so keyed up that you, you wanted basically to play well despite him. And um, I don't think that you can do that. I think times uh, and circumstances have changed that, and I think even Scotty has changed quite a bit. But um, the thing that uh, we all did when we got away from the game is that we, we, we respected Scotty for, for what he did for us. Um, and I think that's probably one of the things that I'd like to get from all of this is the respect of the players. And, and I think you do that by, by winning their confidence. And, and um, basically, really, you, you hope that you can do it by, by winning some games because that certainly builds confidence. You originally had a plan that you were going to maybe coach a year or so in the minors as a head coach. And then now, all of a sudden, you're head coach of the Los Angeles Kings. What changed? What happened? Well, same thing that happened when I became an assistant coach. I wasn't going to even get back into hockey. And um, the circumstances being what they were, it, was, it seemed like the right time and the right situation. And, um, I, you know, after two very successful seasons in Jersey, I don't think the timing would have been any better than, uh, than it was for me right now. And, and the fact that I was coming back to Los Angeles, a place that I had been and a place that I kind of enjoy and enjoy being around and, and uh, looking at all the situations, um, I felt that this was a, the right opportunity and the right time for me. You know, there's a lot of coaches in the NHL that have sort of mentors, uh, Barry Melrose, youth Anthony Robbins, that sort of thing. From what I know of you, I was thinking maybe Steve Martin might be yours. Would that be good? <laughs> no better one than Stevie. <laughs> <laughs> he has fun wherever he goes, and I believe in... Uh, in hard work, but if you don't enjoy what you're doing and you don't have fun uh, coming to the rink and playing the games, then then what's the use of, of doing it? And uh, that's what I want here. I, I saw a lot of desperation and frustration in a lot of faces last year, and I'd sure like to get some of those smiles back. Uh, you talked earlier on, too, that you were going to give the guys a pat on the back a little more often than perhaps they'd had in the last couple of years. Is that your plan? Yeah, well, I don't know. If they make a bad play, I'm sure not going to pat them on the back, but... Uh, I find that, um, you know, I, in fact, I made a, a comparison to a young kid this morning come up and ask me, you know, what I expected of him. I said, what, I don't know what I'm going to expect from you, but certainly the thing that you can expect from me is that uh, you are not going to get yelled at. Um, I think that uh, you can um, succeed and, and do a lot more through uh, gentle explanation than you can at screaming and yelling and tell the guy what a jerk he is, because for the one step that you take forward, you're probably taking five back. So. Um, I believe that uh, if you work hard and, and do your best, then uh, in the long run, we're going to do all right. Um, but if you're not working hard, then that's when you might hear something from me. I remember you always yelling at me, but I I'll believe you this time around anyway. <laughs> Larry, thanks very much. Uh, good success and lots of luck uh, this season. And uh, Mike, uh, we're all done down here. Back upstairs to you. All right. Thank you, Brian. One man that Larry Robinson knows well, his former player, Claude Lemieux. He's now a member of the Avalanche. If you want your stomach to look like this, or you want the great feeling of a lean waistline, then you want 8-Minute Abs. 8-Minute Abs is great. I pop it in, I'm done, and it works. 8-Minute Abs takes you through a series of simple movements scientifically designed into an 8-Minute program for fast results. I use 8-Minute Abs, and I recommend this to all of my clients. I used to wear loose clothes to hide my tummy, but look, now I use 8-Minute Abs. The secret to 8-Minute Abs is using the abdominal muscles in a specific sequence to maximize effectiveness, and that's why it works. It gets the job done in only 8 minutes. If you've got 8 minutes and a VCR, you'll get great abs, too. Call now to get yours for only $19.95, and we'll also send 8-Minute Buns absolutely free. That's a $40 value for just $19.95. Call 1-800-472-1700 to order with a check or credit card. That's 1-800-472-1700. Call right now. Now, the most difficult shots in golf are easy to make. With the Alien Ultimate Wedge, you'll be out in one swing, guaranteed. I don't care how high a handicapper you are or how little you play. You'll get out of the sand on your very first swing or your money back. 
Over 60% of all shots are taken within a short distance of the pin. The Alien Ultimate Wedge's triple radius design gets you out of the sand, out of the deep rough, even off hard pan. You don't need a new swing, a new stance, or a sports psychologist. All you need to get on the green is the Alien Ultimate Wedge. Call now for your free video and brochure and find out how you can get this revolutionary club in your bag. If you live for golf and want to save strokes, pick up the phone right now and order your Alien wedge. I guarantee you, you'll be glad you did. The Alien Ultimate Wedge. There's a long one. One swing, and you're out of there. On it. All right. Guaranteed. ESPN 2's Fire on Ice is brought to you by McDonald's. Have you had your break today? Forum. There you see the captain of the Colorado Avalanche, Joe Sackick, who earlier commented on the big trade. Wendell Clark is out. Claude Lemieux is in. I think, obviously, uh, with Wendell not, not being here, uh, we lose his leadership. Uh, just a name. Uh, he's his presence on the ice. But I think uh, uh, we get that as well in Claude Lemieux. Uh, he's a guy that... Uh, Nobody likes to play against and everybody likes to play with. So uh, um, it was it was something that had to be done. It, was, it, was, it got obvious that uh, Wendell wasn't going to be here. So uh, it was good to get uh, Claude, Claude in here. He owns or shares 61 National Hockey League records. was just a moment ago. He is simply the best there ever was. Tonight he will try to score against the Colorado Avalanche starter for the second straight night, number 35, Stefan Fassett. Some people say that Colorado doesn't have the goaltending. They need to go all the way. Colorado Avalanche think they have exactly the right guy. Stefan Fassett got off to a great start last night. Byron Defoe is at the other end of the ice, and he's kind of unexpected to see in the pipes for a lot of people. Kelly Rudy is injured. Byron Defoe came here in a trade with Pristich. He's only played about 10 games in the NHL, a regular season three in the playoffs, but he thinks he's ready to go. This is his big chance. Now, a lot of pressure early on in this NHL season on the officials. Rob Schick, the referee, Shane Heyer, and Jay Scherer's the linesman for tonight's first full day of action in the National Hockey League, and it has been a busy one. We welcome you to game two of our deuce doubleheader, Mike Goldberg and Brian Engblom from the Great Western Forum in Inglewood, California. The Los Angeles Kings set to take on the Colorado Avalanche. Three two winners last night in their home debut against the Detroit Red Wings by Kevin Todd in his own end. And Sigurad gets it over to O'Donnell, the rookie. Decision to Kovalenko. Mike Ricci dumps it in on the backhand. Played by Defoe easily. Sigurad back up the near board. Todd breaks past the point man. He works down the far side. Has a streaking pass. Conacher. Conacher shoots. Now bounces its way into the neutral zone, advance back into the King's end. 
Berg, the rookie, in an offside, called on the Colorado Avalanche. Their coach is Mark Crawford, and he was the coach of the year last season. This is his second year, and he's got a lot of things he wants to achieve after such a great season one year ago. He sure does. He can be a very happy man right now with the start they've had. They got off to a kind of a sloppy start in game one as well, but they came back very nicely. On the other side is Larry Robinson, Hall of Famer as a player, and he's starting off this season as a head coach. He gets a tremendous amount of respect, naturally, from his players. First time behind the bench as a head coach. He's looking forward to the season. Six Stanley Cups with the Montreal Canadiens and one last year as an assistant with the Devils. Watch for the youngster, number 43 in the white, Vitaly Yakmenu. He is on the line with Wayne Gretzky and Dmitry Krishich. Krishich over in the offseason from the Capitol. They try to advance the puck to Krishich and Troy Murray, the free agent from Pittsburgh, now a member of the Avalanche, gets in front of it. Gretzky tries to dump him. Laid out to Scott Young. Young was a holdout. He has not practiced with the Colorado Avalanche. He dumps it in. Warren Reichel, over from Toronto, in on the four check. Sorely the mainstay, tries to advance to Gretzky. Young is there. Slipped into the corner. Joe Sackett coming in front of the net. Backhand goes just wide. Now let's see. Throws it towards the net. Warren Reichel. Back to Joe Sackett. Confusion behind the net. Sackett working it very well. Checked on the play by Christian. Look at that puck control by Joe Sackett. Unbelievable. Look at him protect that puck and get a score to there for Colorado. Just missing the net with Warren Reichel, Brian. Just wide of firing the post pass. People like to say, why don't you just hit the guy when he's doing that? What do you think they're trying to do out there? You have to contain him. And if you try and hit them and he, and he rolls off it, then he's going to walk out in front on his own. Look at Sackett work still. Great four check, great ship by the Avalanche. One of the best in the league. This guy can really control the puck and really pass it around. You've seen what Joe Sackett can do. And see what happens when that continues to be the case. Holding the stick, the call by Rob Schick. You keep the puck in your opponent's end, and now you have your first power play of the night. Well, Sakic's the one who's going to go to the penalty bench. Uh, he was holding Colorado a stick. He got a little too Colorado carried Colorado away. Team, He's trying to control it. He'll just Super grab a hold. It looks like it's Daryl Sador's stick. Yeah, there it is right there. Well, I don't know about that call. I guess he kind of got the hammer lock on him there, but nonetheless, doesn't matter what I think. Sakic's in the penalty box, and the Kings will have a chance to build a one nothing lead. Holding the stick at 229, the call on the captain of the Colorado Avalanche, Joe Sackick from Burnaby, British Columbia, in his eighth season. Mark Crawford's team was very good last night on the penalty kill. The Detroit Red Wings just one for ten with the man advantage. Three-two victory, as I mentioned earlier, to start the season. 1995 in the National Hockey League, the game you saw on ESPN from McNichols Arena in Denver. I was there. It was a great game. Colorado got off to a little bit of a shaky start, but what a tremendous comeback in the second and third periods they had, and they're going to have to recover a little bit after this early lead by the Kings here on Conacher's goal. And icing and a stoppage in play. The power play just underway, and we'd like to remind you two great nights of hockey coming your way on the news next week on Wednesday at 7.30. The new Whaler, Brendan Shanahan, and Hartford take on Paul Korea and the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. Both teams look to show they must be taken seriously this season. Then on Thursday, we're right back here at the Forum. Gretzky and the Kings face off against Bure, Mo Gilney, and the rest of the Vancouver Canucks. That's Thursday at 10.30. Face off to the side of Byron Defoe. Robert Long wins the draw, gets it to Yari Curry. Curry on the way to John Cruz. Bringing up the puck is Rob Blake, gets it across to Long. He gets it to Cruz now, top of the circle. Cruz working in, pass save made by Fassett. Three white jerseys on, two red jerseys behind. The flip around almost thrown in by Cruz. He heard the top traffic on the point with Rob Blake. Blake throws it around. We'll try to flip it to Curry. And Murray able to clear it the length of the ice. I'll tell you what, that first goal, that early goal by the Kings did put them, it settled them down. When it's your home opener, you're all pumped up, and if things go bad early on, then you're stumbling for a long time. You can see they've settled down already. The confidence is starting to flow. Maybe this power play can help them increase that lead. Gretzky now on the power play unit with Dmitry Christian. And number 43, Vitaly Yakmanev. Behind by Dennis Segura. Good four check applied. Christian back to help. Gets it to Kretzky. Gets it into the neutral zone to Yachmenek. Decision giving chase for Colorado. Ricci is back to help. Puts it around the top boards. Kept in at the point. 
play by Christian in the corner. Yakinev trying to feed a streaking Dennis Segura. Broken up nicely by John Clem. Still pressure behind the net. Gretzky in his favorite spot. Gets it to the youngster. He shoots his goal! With an assist to Wayne Gretzky. Vitaly Yakmanev, his first NHL goal. That's center. The Kings are really pouring it on now, and they're getting their confidence. And that man, Vitaly Yakmanev, watch out for this kid. Played in the OHL the last couple of years. Great hands. And watch these hands work. He just loves playing with Wayne Gretzky. Who wouldn't? Gretzky will set up behind the net and watch Yuckmanov get set up. Nobody near him. He gets it, moves it one step to his left, and fills the top corner. That's great instinct. That's great shooting. Kings Rock to zip. A power play goal at 15 of the first period. Yuckmanov, his first as an NHL player. With the assist to Wayne Gretzky, his first point of the year. It is 2 nothing Los Angeles. Also given assist on the play to Dimitri Kristic. Here's Lockett. And a whistle behind the play as Granado tangled up. And we'll have a penalty. We'll get it sorted out when we return. Yakmanev with the power play. Goal five minutes old. And the Kings lay 2-0. We're going to have a puffin' workout today. Let's get to our chair and go. And back and up. Imagine an and exercise back, this easy to do that up. actually does you some and good. And feel the burn. And back and up. And back and up. Introducing the Soloflex Rocket. It gives you both an aerobic workout and builds muscle for permanent fat loss. And you can own it for less than you'd imagine. Call now for a free brochure and video. Bristol Studios, Sabres and Ottawa. Check out Gary Galley firing and Brad May on the redirect and Buffalo has a 2-1 lead back to Mike in L.A. We welcome you back to Inglewood, California. Great Western Forum. Joe Sackett breaks across the blue line, tries to work towards the backhand. Checked off the play by O'Donnell, number six. Segura behind. Yari Curry. The puck squirts up front to Kevin Todd. Todd streaks down the far side. Claude Lemieux back for Colorado. Todd still controls. Gets it back to O'Donnell. The first power play of the night for the Avalanche. Tony Granato went off for a hold. Colorado's power play last year. One of the best in the National Hockey League. Ranked number three. They were just percentage points away from the Detroit Red Wings. Here's Lemieux. His shirt. First shot of the game. Off the stick of Daryl Sador. Sorley tries to play the puppy Sador into the corner to help. Sorley's there still. Tight checking on Claude Lemieux, Peter Forsberg. Now behind the net, Owen Nolan. The NHL game winners last year. Nolan, one of the most prolific scorers in the short season. Battling with McSorley. Forsberg in the help. Power play has 49 seconds remaining. Big shot goes wide by Lemieux. Now look at Lemieux on the point, Brian. Remember, Uwe Krupp hurt last night. He could be lost for the season. Forsberg in front. Fires. Big save by the foe. Well, Joe Sack will all, Zach Sackick will always be out there on the power play. He plays the point an awful lot. It looks like they may interchange with the Lemieux a little bit to see, wait and see what happens with Slaney or somebody else on the point. Now played by Sackick. Sackick back across. Mirabal, the youngster, fired just wide. Get in the corner. Trying to control. Valerie Kamensky and he shoots and scores. Valerie Kamensky, who had two goals last night, waited for his chance to fire the puck and beat Byron Defoe. Joe Sackick was in front. He may have got a stick on it. Excellent setup by the Colorado Avalanche. They just moved the puck around. They really needed this goal. It's Joe Sackick is going to get the goal. He moves into position. Outstanding passing. Kaminsky has the puck in the faceoff circle. You can see him waiting. Look at Sackick. He slipped in the back door. Nobody saw him. Sackick's all alone. There's a, a great view of him. Look at this. Nobody in the frame. Nobody else around Sackick. Look at that pass. 
you're not going to miss very many of those, especially when you have the kind of hands that Joe Sackick has. His first goal of the year, give the assist to Valeri Kamensky. A power play goal, so both teams have taken advantage of their odd man situations early. Well, Valeri Kaminsky was absolutely awesome last night in the, in the first game against Detroit. He scored two goals. He was up and down the ice. That was a great setup by Kaminsky on that goal to Sackick. You could see him hold onto it. Sackick slipped down the backside. And this is the type of thing that we did see in the game last night. Early in the season, both teams will always be guilty of not being very good away from the puck. And that's what happens with the Kings there. They were all looking at Kaminsky. Nobody saw Sackick. Kaminsky and... Anders Mirbold, number 55, get the assist. The goal coming at 6.25 makes our score 2-1. to one. And to add to that, Los Angeles got called for too many men on the ice. So the second power play of the night for the Avalanche. Obviously, as you saw, they were successful on their first. Kaminsky plays it on the near side. Gretzky trying to tangle with him. Gretzky able to clear. Well, too many men on the ice will hurt them, too. It must have been a bad change. We were busy watching the play develop and that goal being scored. But now the Kings are in a little bit of a hole because they've taken away their own momentum, really. Offsides. And will serve the bench minor for too many men on the ice. What a beautiful second goal for the Kings that Yuck Men have scored on the power play. This kid has got great hockey sense. He's fresh out of junior hockey. I talked to him a little bit this morning. Larry Robinson has confidence in him. He was one of the three main surprises in the Kings camp, and Yuck Menev is going to get some time. The board. One minute and 30 seconds remaining in the two-minute bench minor. Works it out of his own zone. Ed mans the puck to Peter Forsberg. Forsberg on the backhand up to Claude Lemieux. Back to Peter Forsberg. Leaves for Sackett. He's got Mirbold across. So keeping himself on the far side. Working there with Peter Forsberg. Sackett now to Mirbold. The youngsters getting their power play time, right? They sure are. Mirvold is one of the guys, along with Slaney, who they're hoping to fit in as a, a power play specialist on the point, as we talked about earlier in the show. But Sackick is out there on the point. He has got world-class playmaking talent. He's got a big shot as well. And uh, Mirvold and probably Slaney, there's Slaney right now. They'll split the duties back there as well. Good back check by Kevin Todd as the puck is not advanced by the Colorado Avalanche. Now 39 seconds left. And with time to clear is Jari Curry. There's John Slaney, the man you spoke of a moment ago. Up ahead to Troy Murray. There's cross-ice pass taken by Warren Reichel. He'll dump it to the side of Byron Defoe and out of play. And we'll check in with Reese Davis. In the Shark Tank, actually, is this Davis and Senators? Thought we were headed for, we are. That's it. That's Santa Sosa like beating Eddie Belfort's one nothing Sharks. Back to you in L.A. Our score, 2-1. to one. Early goal scored by the Los Angeles Kings, Pat Conacher, and then the rookie, Vitaly Yakmanev on the power play with an assist to Wayne Gretzky. And then just a little after two minutes from there, Joe Sackick made it 2-1. Got a quick look at Troy Murray, free agent acquisition of the Colorado Avalanche. LeFay plays behind, 10 seconds now remaining in the bench minor. Slaney headmans it to Mike Ricci. Tries the centering pass, the foe gets a stick on it, cleared but not out. Watch out for Pat Conacher, he's got great wheels. Conacher leaves the backhand pass and Ricci clears, we're at five apiece skating. That last play that Pat Conacher made there, that's not the type of play that Larry Robbins is going to want. When you're on the attack, you don't throw it back towards the blue line and give it an easy turnover. If there's nobody there for your team, get it deep. I think Pat Conacher knows that. He was shaking his head after he did it, but it was too late. Kevin Todd now working behind. Stefan Fassett, centering pass taken by Adam Detmarsh. Colorado advances over the red line with Adam Detmarsh, number 18. Streaks to the outside, works to the backhand, pad save made. Good save by Byron Defoe. A strong move to the outside by Adam Deadmarsh. Adam Deadmarsh can really play. This guy's a hard-nosed kid. He really took it to the net. A turnover inside, and Defoe comes up again. The save on Peter Forsberg. John Clem, number 24. Back hands it ahead. And Segura will chase it down for Los Angeles. Yari Curry. 
He's on the checking line. Maybe he'll call him the third line of the Kings, but I watched him in practice yesterday. Watch out for Yari Curry. He's still got the great hands. He's breaking towards the net with Long trying to keep it himself. Here is Curry. Brian gets it out. Quick pass. And the save made by Pistet. Perfect example of Yari Curry. He can still find the open man. So great. He reads the play as well as anybody in the entire league. And anybody who plays with him is going to benefit from his experience. That's a pretty well-balanced line with Ron and Bruce. That's the checking line. I'll take their ability to score yeah, on the day of the week. Yeah, I'm not sure I'd call it the checking line. It's kind of a toss-up right now between uh, which one you'd call a checking line and which one's a scoring line. I think they're fairly well-balanced uh, through their first three lines. Slaney. Polinski trying to stay on side. He does. The low leaves for his defenseman. Number six, Sean O'Donnell, the rookie out of Ottawa, 24 years old. Craig Wolanin had a goal last night. Advances the puck towards the side of Clark Lemieux. Tony Granato, number 21, plays for the Los Angeles Kings. Granato missed a lot of games last year with injury, as did Rick Tockett. It was on the far side on the right wing. Troy Murray now. Centering pass just to the side of the net. Deflected just wide. Good play by Marty McSorley there. He prevented that goal from being scored. With Larry Kaminsky streaking towards the post. Poked away nicely by the ball. Now here's Tockett. McSorley pulled down from behind. Trying to get it towards Johnny Perot was Rick Tockett. We are going to have a Los Angeles power play. Hoping is the call. The Kings go on the power play when we return. Hello from Plank Road, where our man Paul has some visitors, the Plank Road Polar Bear. Each year, the polar bears seek ultimate refreshment by throwing themselves into icy cold waters. We suggest an alternative, Ice Brewed Ice House. Ice brewed so there's never any watered-down taste, just more of what you want in a beer. Ice Brewed Ice House. Icy smooth refreshment without the annoying frostbite. Thanks, and enjoy. I don't see them. I think we're safe. Of course we're safe. We're in my Subaru Outback. I know the world's first Ford utility wagon. This beauty's got dual airbags, full-time all-wheel drive. And it's more stable in the turn than a blazer. What else you got? <laughs> Get a brake and an explorer. That's my Subaru Outback. The world's first sport utility wagon. Marty McSorley is so good at flying out of the hole, the slot in his end, and joining the rush. Look at the top of the screen here. He's the second man you can see half up. Watch the hook on him. He'll make it look real good. That's a real nice dive, Marty, but it works real well. Kaminsky's in the penalty box for hooking. Gretzky on the power play unit with Krzyzic and Yakmanev. Aki Berg, the top pick, and Rob Blake at the blue line. Here's Yakmanev. Gets it over to Gretzky. One timer by Blake. Pass safe. Pissett rebound. Pissett is there again. Sylvain Lefebvre up to Scott Young. Young fires side of the net. Now Ricci tries to advance back in. Blake will reset with Gretzky. Gretzky up ahead to Kristich. Left for the great one. Cross ice pass to Hockey Burke. Good move at the blue line. Berg now looks for help. Gets it back to Rob Blake. In the corner, Dimitri Christian. Now Aki Berg just fires at Christian. Redirects Kresge working to the backhand. In front, Yakmanev. Great move and a good save by Fissette. Oh, what a great move that was. He's right, and even a better save by Fissette. That was outstanding. Wayne Gretzky out there on the power play, and certainly that's their usual plays for him. If he gets a guy like Yachmanov going and Dmitry Kristich, you will see his game absolutely surge ahead. Everybody, of course, looks on the score sheet at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the night. How well did Wayne Gretzky play? Nobody has pressure like that except maybe Mario Lemieux. If Yachmanov and Kristich can get going, look out for this guy again. Now, speaking of Wayne Gretzky, let's take a look at our Miller Lite League leaders, active goal scorers, two of them on the same team here tonight. Wayne Gretzky and Yari Curry, our Miller Lite league leader. Gretzky with 814 career goals. He's added to his point total with an assist tonight. Granado with Yannick Perot. Granado, the quick shot and a glove saved by Stefan Fassett. 
the Kings really are confident right now. They've got this power play working very nicely. Guys are moving to the holes, and Colorado is standing around a little bit, and they're allowing those holes to, to be too large. Granado just moved into the middle there. A quick pass and a quick shot. Colorado's going to have to move to those guys in the scoring areas a little bit quicker. They're feeling their way around too much. The Kings are not feeling their way around. They've got their legs. They've got their timing, and they're just moving the puck. 58 seconds remaining in the power play. Perot to take the draw against number 47, Claude Lapointe. Point wins, gets it back to Sylvain Lafave. He clears it the length of the ice surface. Tony Granato missed 15 games last year with a broken foot. And Rick Tockett missed 12 games with back problems. They're both on the ice now, and that is a bonus for Larry Robinson's team. I'll say. Mr. Gurev. Across to Marty McSorley. 33 seconds remaining in the minor penalty. Perot. He's for Tocchet. Tocchet, the former flyer and Penguin, passes it to the side. And McSorley will play. Dumps back in behind the net. Tony Granato working John Clem. Troy Murray there to help. He backhands it and clears it one more time. Well, Troy Murray is a very experienced player. He'll help him in killing penalties and with leadership as well. He got that one down the ice. And Colorado trying to regain themselves here still in their penalty killing unit. Five seconds remaining in the minor penalty to Valerie Kamensky. Sean O'Donnell plays for Los Angeles. Daryl Sador, head man, too far for Kevin Todd. Watch out for Pat Conacher. Over the neutral zone, played by Sean O'Donnell. Kevin Patter with Derek Lacroix. Offside, Colorado will take a break with 6.39 remaining in the first, and the Kings leading 2-1. The neighborhoods, the backbone, the spirit of Philadelphia, where Jim Kenney was born, and for whom city councilman at large Jim Kenney has fought. On the council, Kenney has fought to fund our local libraries. Kenney toughened the anti-graffiti and vandalism laws to protect the neighborhoods of the city he loves. And Kenney restored funding for alley lights to keep the criminals away. On election day, re-elect Jim Kenney, fighting for our neighborhoods, because Philadelphia's neighborhoods are his home. Nobody can match our deals, and we mean nobody. We're at Doran Auto on Route 73 in Palmyra. We have the latest model pre-owned cars with the best service for as low as $199 down. Adoran is a full-service dealership. We guarantee state inspection and provide up to a three-year warranty. Our easy payment plans fit any budget. Bad credit? No problem. We'll arrange financing with an established lending institution. If you have a job, you'll get credit. Nobody can match our deals, and we mean nobody. Adoran Auto, 209 Route 73 in Palmyra. Davis in our Bristol studios back in the Shark Tank. Check out the Blackhawk Eric Jose right in front of the net. Look what I found. Pops at home and tied at one. Back to Mike in L.A. Kings with nine shots on goal. Colorado with 7-2-1 our score. 6-37 remaining in the first period of play. Mike Goldberg, Brian Engblom. Game two of your deuce doubleheader. What a start of the season and a return to the NHL for Mario Lemieux and the Pittsburgh Penguins. John Drews chases up the near side on John Clem. Joe Sackick now plays for the Avalanche. Sackick waiting for help. Gets it ahead to Valeri Kamensky. Watch out for Claude Lemieux. Scramble in front and cleared ahead by the King. Joe Sackick, such great hands. Waited for help and slipped a nice easy pass up ahead. Now Robert Lung with one hand tried to get it to Curry. Buck bounces through the neutral zone. Good defensive play by Joe Sackick there. He saw that Yari Curry was standing in a very uh, uh, in an area where he certainly could score a goal, and he made the check just at the last minute and got the puck out of the zone. John Slaney, number 27, chasing it down from Colorado. Slaney came into camp at times. They said tried to do a bit too much. Owen Nolan, high shot over the head of Byron Defoe. They have a lot of promise in John Slaney, who played juniors with Crawford. Now here's Gretzky with a streaking. Yeah, Menendi almost gets it to him. Owen Nolan on the back check. He picks it back up for Los Angeles. Gretzky very disciplined this offseason. Skated for the first time in what he can remember his career. He usually took the season off, at least the summer. But he skated a lot this year because of the shortened amount of games he played one year ago. Hurt shot goes just wide. And Wayne Gretzky always works out hard off the ice, but he normally doesn't skate much. You're right. Forsberg now. Leaves for Nolan. Nolan shoots. What a save by the foe. Rebound. Watch out to fall again. The shot was wide by Reichel. 
Aaron Defoe looks sharp. He made some good saves there. He recovered his position very well. And Colorado, even though they tried to come back on a rebound, there was nothing there. Now talk it with Kovalenko. Kept in by Christian. Across to Daryl Sador. Sador shot knocked down in front by Sylvain Lefebvre. Adam Denmarsh clears it but not out. Lefebvre circle. Colorado tries to advance. Sador will chase down for Los Angeles. Late ahead, Tony Granado. Granado to Tocchet. Tocchet wisely dumps it to the side of Stephon Fassett. Perot was in quickly, but cleared around on the side by Fassett. Tangle, Ricci is involved. And now McStorley with time. Skates in, backhand. Pass shot saved by Fassett on Yannick Perot. Now Granado to the backhand. Trying to work in traffic. Ricci tangles him up with the set. Knocked down by Adam Denmarsh. He finally clears his own zone. And thrown ahead by Andre Kovalenko. I'll tell you what, Marty McSorley's ability to make plays is very much underrated. Sometimes he's a tendency to overdo it. That last time he moved in there, early in the game, I'd like to see a defenseman just blow it at the net and then see what develops later on. But I'll tell you, Marty's a very heads-up guy and can make some of the prettiest plays you're going to see in the offensive zone. Kamensky angling on the near side, trying to work in traffic against Sean O'Donnell. Now Sackett tried to center the pass. It was broken up by the Kings defenseman. Good forecheck now by Colorado. O'Donnell finally comes away, and he just flips it into the neutral zone. Pat Conacher gives chase. Gets a step on Clem, works to the forehand. Clem retreats nicely and jams him into the backboard. Kevin Todd also in on the forecheck. And Eric Lacroix looking for his opportunity. Kevin Todd working with John Clem. Knocked to the ice. Kamensky there. Look at these guys fight as Lacroix can help. Lacroix's dad, Pierre, the GM of Colorado. The icing and the stoppage in play. Kings lead first period here in Los Angeles. Thanks. Domino's deep dish always gets quite a reaction. Saucy. Tasty. <laughs> Ultimate deep dish. Now order a thick, zesty deep dish and get buffalo wings for $1.99. This is deep. Most new car radiators are made of thin, lightweight aluminum under tremendous stress. Protect your car in the Prestone Zone against corrosion and temperature extremes. It's your car. Protect it in the Prestone Zone. So. Oh. I have to get up early tomorrow. I do too. Well, good night, Lisa. Good night. Miller Light Ice, for the taste that goes all out when you're out. Uh, I would have been here earlier, but I had to drop off. Lisa? Miller Light Ice, the night is young. Larry Robinson on the bench for the Los Angeles Kings. He's at it. He's going to be like that all season. I think it's safe to say that Larry is prepared for the worst in the first couple of weeks, at least, of the season. He is kind of reteaching this team how he wants them to play. That takes time. Sometimes they're going to get caught probably thinking too much, but it sure doesn't show here tonight so far. He dumps it into the near side. Sylvain Lefebvre. Take it out. Hockman in Take with Christian. Christian's tangling with Troy Murray. Now Kretzky behind the net. into the neutral zone. Scott Young was on the plane, just came to a contract deal in the last couple of days. Did not play last night in game one against the Detroit Red Wings. Shot the stick saved by Byron Defoe. He's a real welcome addition, that's for sure. He was on the plane, and I think a lot of guys were shocked about it. He just signed yesterday afternoon, as you said. Back towards Sylvain Lefebvre. Lefebvre trying to take time. Gets it ahead to Scott Young, number 48. Wendell Clark was a holdout. He ended up being gone. Traded earlier in the three-way deal that involved Stevie Thomas with the New York Islanders, New Jersey Devils, and Claude Lemieux here. Here's the door. Quick shot. Club save. Gretzky rebound just wide. Great save by Cassette there. Outstanding puck moving by the Kings as Daryl Sador moved in for that top shelf. Now Owen Nolan. Takes a weird bounce and goes through the legs of the foe, but behind the net. Wow, that was a little dicey there. That almost hit him and went out in front of the net. A little curtsy behind the net. He must have hit a rut. John Drews, Craig Roland in on the play. Peter Forsberg, rookie of the year in the NHL, number 21. Forsberg tangling with Drews, long in the help. Larry 
Curry on the four check, advanced to Owen Rowland. Nolan the big shot, Curry got in the way of that. Diligent back checking by Yari Curry, you need that from everyone. Now here comes Curry on the offensive. Leaves for Robert Long, works top of the circle. Big sorely, oh, he tried to feed it over to Yari Curry just a bit in front of him. That's what I was talking about before. You'd like to see him shoot there, but Marty likes to make those passes. He likes to make the plays. Long tried to go behind the back to Curry. It was broken up. Nolan flips it high, bouncing puck in front of the foe, and he will hold on with just under a minute remaining in the first period. Pizza Hut presents Midnight Madness. It's the tip-off for the 1995 ESPN and ESPN2 college basketball season. ESPN comes to you from three separate sites, including Susie Culver and Dick Vitale from Maryland. The Deuce will go to three campuses, including preseason number one pick, Kansas. One student from each school will have the chance to win a one-year scholarship if they can sink a half-court shot. A student in Cincinnati did it last year as Pizza Hut presents Midnight Madness. Here's the last scoring chance at the Los Angeles Kings. There's Daryl Sador moving in. The quick one-timer shot. Excellent save by Facetti. Tracked the puck very well. It hit him in the upper torso area near the shoulder. And look who's right there. Wayne Gretzky. The Kings are getting to the loose puck. 48.3 seconds remaining in the first period. And he joined us late. The Kings doing a good job on the faceoffs and leading in this game on goals by Pat Conacher and the rookie Vitaly Yasmanev on the power play. Joe Sackett scored for the Colorado Avalanche. Also a power play goal. That coming at 6.25 of this first period. Three goals in the first six minutes plus. Welcome to the new NHL. We welcome you to check in with Sports Smash and our man Reese Davis. First period stats and analysis, and of course, the big day in college football, Ohio State, a good victory over Penn State. But this was a day of upsets on the gridiron. I'm sure Reese will have that and much more. It's Sports Smash coming up in our first intermission. I'll tell you, this line out there for the Kings can be your worst nightmare, especially if the Kings are going to play with the lead like they are right now. Todd Conacher and Lacroix can be all over you like a bad suit, and they'll punish you at the same time. So Colorado will have their hands full when these guys are out there. You know, in his 10th NHL season, I was surprised yesterday, and I mean no disrespect to Pat Conacher, but he has still got the wheels, Brian. Very quick with the feet. He is tremendously hard worker. He pushes himself really hard in the offseason, and what a guy. He is a first-class guy. They love to have him in the locker room, and people say, you know, he can't score goals, but you got the first one here tonight. What an effort he gives you every night. Fourth year with the Los Angeles Kings. Gets it in front to Todd as we go to the end of the period. Todd shot blocked by Fassett. And the first period has come to an end. The Los Angeles Kings have one period in the books, and it was a good one. A power play goal, a quick one by Conacher, and they are going to the locker room, leading 2-1. to one. When we return, you check in with the sports match. From the creator of T2 and Aliens, it's the turn of the century. I'm the magic man. He sells other people's lives for entertainment. Straight from the cerebral cortex. They're there. You're feeling it. But now, through the eyes of a murderer... It's a setup! He's uncovered a conspiracy. You know how high up the food chain this thing goes. And they've discovered him. Go! Strange Days, directed by Catherine Bigelow. Rated R. Friday at theaters everywhere. It's the event everyone's been waiting for. The Tony the Tiger sweepstakes. Just call Tony at 1-800-779-TONY from a touchstone phone and punch in the UPC number from a box of Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. You could win the grand prize trip for four to the Australian Outback or one of ten first prize trips to the San Diego Zoo. Every 500th caller gets a free Tony the Tiger watch. So call Tony today. It's easy to enter. I won! Oh, and thousands will win. He doesn't know it, but I found this under his pillow. I flipped through these great pages on sports, fitness, adventure. Now I know where all the excitement in our life comes from. Men's Journal. He really cares about living life better. Men's Journal covers everything better, from the best in mountain bikes to fishing in Alaska, from rafting down the Colorado to building a better body. It tells him how to get started, where to go, and what to do when he gets there. Men's Journal shows him where to find the best of everything. And every issue tells him how to look better, be healthier, and build endurance. From toning up his abs to tuning up our sex life. Men's Journal tells you everything about living life better. Hey. 
<laughs> Start doing it better. Subscribe now to Men's Journal for only $11.97 and get this 200-page equipment guide absolutely free. Call 1-800-936-6100. That's 1-800-936-6100. Heading to Memphis, Route 64. Drove all night, but real sore. Call your old lady and give her the news. You just got the mother of all tattoos. Call 1-800-COLLECT from any phone. Hello, welcome to the first intermission smash. I'm Reese Davis. Glad to have you along with us where the Kings are up on the avalanche 2-1 after one period. Let's talk a little NHL hockey. After former Whaler Chris Pronger did poorly on a preseason conditioning test, Blues coach Mike Keenan looked at him and said, do you have any idea who I traded for you? And he probably didn't say it too nicely. The answer to that question is Brendan Shanahan, and he's a big reason the Whale is ready and pumped for this season. There's another guy, Sean Burke. They're taking on the Rangers' second period, a kick save off former Whaler Pat Verbeek, and then Brian Leach tries the short side, and Burke's there for the save. Still no score. Whalers tally first, Glenn Wesley all alone, and the Whalers go on to win it by count of 2 0. Toronto and Pittsburgh, Mario Lemieux, emotional to be back after sitting out most of last season. Ron Francis, the one timer, beats Pot Van, that tied it at one. The Penson blew it wide open in the second. Sergey Zubov, the nifty pass from Yaromir Yager, and the Pens fly away by a count of eight to three. Flyers and Canadians, Patrick Waugh trying to rebound from an off year, and the Flyers test it early. John LeClaire, nice pass to Lindros, who bangs it past Waugh. Two nothing Flyers, still in the first. Philly up by the same score. Lindros starts the rush drops for Renberg, and John LeClaire puts it in. Seven one, Philadelphia wins it. Panthers and Devils. Jersey raising the Stanley Cup banner, and he's a bit of a face painter. Remember that guy from Seinfeld? you got to support your team. Bobby Owee's shot kicked aside, but John McClain, there to put it home right there. Die hard, 1-0 Devils. 2-0 Devils now in the third. Sean Chambers feeds John McClain, and there's Die Hard 2, the sequel. Devils go on to win it by a count of 4 to nothing. Elsewhere in the NHL, Boston and the Islanders skate to a 4-4 tie. Mike Milbury's first game with the Isles against his former team and the first game in Boston's new fleet center. Cam Neely had a hat trick for the Bees. Washington and St. Louis, the Caps take it 4-1. Pat Peak, a goal and an assist. The Caps without Bondra and Pavanka, who are both holding out and playing in the IHL. Calgary and Tampa Bay tie at three after an overtime period. Mike Sullivan tied it up with 157 left to go to send it into overtime, and neither team could tally in the extra hockey. Winnipeg over Dallas, 7-5. Nikolai Hobbybulin with 38 saves, including stopping all 18 shots from the Stars in the third period. Brad May scored the go-ahead goal, and Dominic Hasek had 38 saves for the Sabres as they beat Ottawa. Chicago and San Jose tied up in the first period. Eric Daze and Sandus Ozelinch have goals for their respective teams. Let's talk a little baseball now. National League playoffs, Rockies and Braves, top three, no score. Greg Maddox to Dante, an inferno. Bichette, a three-run job to right. Rockies up 3-0, but Atlanta storms back in the bottom of the third. Chipper goes with it, and Bichette can't get there. Two runs score, that makes it 3-2. Next batter will be the crime dog. Why must I chase the cat? Must have been the crime dog in me. A two-run shot off Saberhagen, 4-3 Braves. Bottom five, the dog. Bow, wow, wow, yippee, yo, yippee, yay. A solo job this time. Braves go on to win it 10-4. McGriff had five RBIs, and they win the series 3-1. Greg Maddox, not terribly effective once again, but he does pick up the W, and the Braves go on now to face the Cincinnati Reds in the National League Championship Series. Game one will be Glavin against Shurik. Yankees and Seattle. Seattle has even that series now 11-8. What a night for Edgar Martinez. A three-run homer and a grand slam. Seven RBIs in a postseason game. That is a record. It breaks the previous record held by Bobby Richardson in the 1960 World Series and Will Clark in the 1989 NLCS. Each of those gentlemen had six RBIs. David Cohn and Andy Bennett will decide it in game five. Our score, the King up on the avalanche. 2-1 after one period. We're back with more smash after this.
remaining between these two teams in 641 days. The Kings lead after one, two to one. Wayne Gretzky, number 99, we spoke with him yesterday. He commented about many things, including what he believes is his greatest asset. Um, you look at some of the players, their speed they have, the size they have, their power, their, their, their shots. I just never really had that package that guys like Lemieux and Lindros and Fedorov and Messi, I never really had that package that those guys have all, all seemed to have. Um, I had to make up for it in uh, my mental toughness. Uh, mentally, I've stayed focused and, and I've stayed strong and that I was ready for each game. I mean, I'm not sitting here telling you that I've played every game in my life has been good. I've played a lot of stinkers, but it hasn't been from my mental approach because mentally I've been strong every night, and I think that's what's carried me more than anything in my career. More than anyone else. Well, a fine first 20 minutes for number 99, Wayne Gretzky. Got an assist on the power play, had a couple of wonderful opportunities. His team comes back into the second period with a 2-1 lead. Hockey You've got one last chance. The very last Faulkner Automotive Armory sale of the year. Three days only. This Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, with fresh inventories arriving daily. Save thousands. As Faulkner liquidates $5 million of excess used car and truck inventory. Looking to spend $2,000 or $20,000? It's here. One location only. The National Guard Armory in Northeast Philadelphia. The Faulkner Automotive Used Car and Truck Armory sale. Don't miss it. Sunday night NFL on TNT looks at the linebacker, plays defense, roguishly independent, loves to hit people, feeds off intimidation, brute force, relentless pursuits. So what do you think happens when he has to wait till Sunday night to play? Yeah, there's something about Sunday night football. Sunday night NFL on TNT. Brought to you locally by O'Neill Buick. For your best Buick deal, come see O'Neill. And by the Aquatic and Fitness Center at Pennypack. Aquatic physical therapy and exercise for the Philadelphia... of the National Hockey League is brought to you by TGI Friday's Restaurants. Everyone looks forward to Fridays. And by the new Dodge. We're thinking ahead. Just about set to start the second period here from the Great Western Forum in Inglewood, California. Kings leading 2-1. to one. Check out some of the highlights from the first period. As the Kings got on the board quickly, 30 seconds into the game, the goal by Pat Conacher, and then they worked it on the power play, Brian. Vitaly Yakmanov will get open just off to the side of the net. You'll see him there on the edge. He takes one step into the middle, and that's a world-class goal. Excellent hands there. Top shot by Yakmanov. His first goal in the National Hockey League assisted by Wayne Gretzky. Speaking Joe of Sack power play goals. Joe Sackett will get a power play goal. Excuse me, Mike. He'll go down the back door here. Watch him. No King player is near him. Nobody else in the frame. He's not going to miss from there. Joe Sackett throwing in the power play goal and making it 2-1. to one. A great assist on the play by Valeri Kamensky. First period statistics. Shots on goal. 12-9 in favor of the Kings. Scoring chances just about even. The Kings doing a good job on the faceoffs, and both power plays were very productive. Wayne Gretzky, number 99, as we mentioned, came in in great shape. He says maybe as good a shape as he has been in in his career. Gretzky, number 99, in his 17th NHL season, eighth with the Los Angeles Kings. Wayne Gretzky has seen his points decline, though, last year, arguably not a good one for Wayne Gretzky, and he has admitted that. Look at the numbers with the Oilers, 2.4 points per game, and with the Kings in the first couple of years, he was near that two points a game again, and then from 93 to 95, 1.38, and last year, Wayne Gretzky, just 11 goals in 48 games. And that's Boy, not bad for the normal man. That's right. And, and you were talking to Wayne earlier on, and he looks like he is in great shape. And one of the guys that can do a test of that is sitting with us and will be with us for the remainder of this second period, Kelly Rudy, King's goaltender, who is out with a sprained ankle. Kelly, welcome, and uh, how are you feeling? Well, I'm coming around, Brian. Thank you. Uh, I was uh, pretty depressed with the uh, injury uh, two, three weeks ago, but uh, in the last week, it's really made a lot of progress, and right. you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. This is exciting. I have to say that. Corral across to Tony Granato. Granato works it in the offensive zone. The blocker save made by Facet. 
Here's Perot and Rick Tockett now play. No team's even strength to start the second period. Puck knocked down, and Owen Nolan plays for Colorado. Now a point by the backhand to Nolan. Nolan with help from Forsberg on the near side. Segurev will give chase for Los Angeles. Cleared, and we should have an icing. If the Avalanche player gets their first good hustle by Yannick Perot and is waved off. Kelly, the Kings are really hustling here. That early goal by Pat Conacher obviously settled everybody down, but everybody is under control out there, aren't they? I think that's going to be the key to our year this year, and we know it. And we've been disappointed in the past with our patience and with our discipline. And this year, uh, you can really see it in preseason, certainly in this first game, even with the excitement and with the enthusiasm, we're not taking stupid penalties. Good one-timer by Tony Granato. Now the puck forwarded to Valeri Kamensky. Kamensky working to the outside of play. In front of Byron Defoe, and he makes the stick save. That Kamensky is nothing but a pure goal scorer. Oh, and he got great wheels. So he scored some beautiful goals last night, and you saw the third. There's a turn on of the, of the extra a, adrenaline speed as he came in off the wing there. Good challenge there by Defoe, too. He's terrific. Byron had no other choice, and it was a great choice. Added up towards Dimitri Christian. Tried to redirect towards Jacques Manet. Now Gretzky plays in the neutral zone on the backhand, and we have a stoppage in play, and Byron Defoe already has come up with some big saves, Kelly. I think in uh, watching Byron, one of the first things you really notice, other than his uh, talents or his uh, his willingness to compete out there, and he really battles, and it's really noticeable, Brian, and not only here in the games, but in practices and watching. Uh, sure, take a look at this last save and talk about it. Uh, well, Byron, again, there he's just competing right there. Uh, Kamensky is a truly outstanding goal scorer. And Byron knows that if he's going to wait and stay back in his net and give uh, Kaminsky the opportunity to go straight across his crease, he's not going to have a chance on the shot. So, and again, yeah, coming from uh, England like that, I'm going to have to talk to him and find out maybe his uh, father was in the armed forces or something. Now he's English kid Kelly Rudy from Edmonton in his 13th NHL season, eighth with the Kings, the club MVP last year, 14 wins. 91% save percentage, but it, it is well known that the Los Angeles Kings allowed the most shots on goal of any team in the NHL last year. You were a busy man, Kelly. Well, we were in disarray, as Brian can attest to. He was around uh, all last year, uh, games and practices. And as a matter of fact, getting back a couple points when we were talking about Wayne Gretzky at the start of the period, uh, and people saying, well, it was worst year and so on, and the points weren't there, but everybody has to under understand the turmoil that we're under as a franchise and uh, Wayne carries the weight of the world on his shoulders. That's Wayne right. He's carrying the lead for 15 years, so it's a tough position. Well, the Kings here are shorthanded. They were called for too many men on the ice. I saw six guys out there, but I thought the linesmen and the referees had missed it. Apparently not, so the Kings killing off a penalty here for too many men. This will be the third power play opportunity of the night for the Avalanche. They have been successful on one occasion. Across to Sackick, who tries to redirect in front of Yari Curry. Puck towards free, and Curry clear. Kevin Todd giving chase on Peter Forsberg. Behind Stefan Fassett. Now Sackick. Sackick. Sends it around. Try to play by Todd. Gets it out to Curry. Curry with the backhand. Played at the red line by Sackick. One minute and ten seconds remaining in the bench minor. Andrews Mirabold out there on the power play along with Joe Sackick. We mentioned earlier he's one of the guys that's trying to break in and become that quarterback, that defenseman quarterback that can relieve Sackick once in a while. Louis Krupp may be gone for the season, could be an ACL. He was hurt last night in the opener against the Detroit Red Wings. He saw his power play time, wasn't really a focus on the power play, but certainly an experienced blue liner. Oh, that's going to really hurt him too. Now watch Lemieux working from the side of the net, six state by the foe, pushed back in towards Ricci, Segura there to help. Now Sackick plays for Colorado, back behind the net to Claude Lemieux. Sackick. He can make the dangerous pass so quickly. Working a two-man game with Claude Lemieux in the corner. Now Lemieux trying to flip it through the crease. Ricci wasn't there at the post. Put back in by Slaney. Segura behind. Lemieux gets it. Puck kept in. Ten seconds left in the man advantage for Colorado. Robert Long, a good job of trying to clear but not out. Puck gets across. Slaney sends it back. Played by Kamensky. Kamensky and Segura. Now Drew controls for Los Angeles. Both teams at even strength. Yannick 
Perot comes out of the box. Kings did a nice job of keeping that power play to the outside. The puck did not penetrate in the middle. No shots from the scoring area. Nice job by the Kings. Though. That's something that we've really been working on in practice also, Brian, is that uh, Larry has stressed from day one, keep the shots on the outside. That's right. And the patience level. Larry was always a patient player. He wants to, he wants the players in front of you, goaltenders, Kelly. A bunch of thinking out there. You lost some of that last year. But two on one, almost developing in front of Byron Defoe. He makes the kick save and then gets the rebound to a streaking Scott Young. Good hit thrown by Rob Blake. Now Blake works behind the net. Pass intercepted by Warren Reichel, and Blake makes him pay. Now Christic. Christic battles with Scott Young, gets it ahead to Gretzky. Gretzky the centering pass to Aki Berg across to the other youngster, Yakimanev. He leaves for Berg. Aki Berg, the third overall pick, 18-year-old out of Finland. Marty McSorley. Head man to Gretzky. Gretzky gets it back to McSorley. He tries to get it across. Shot by Granado, and it's deflected from behind by Troy Murray. Good recovery by Murray there, just in the nick of time. Uh, Tony Granado had a great scoring chance in front of the net. And he scoots around a couple of defenders, trying to get it to Gretzky. Gretzky now plays. Yachmanel, centering pass to Granado. In front of Owen Nolan, Granado will play again. Work back behind Yachmanel, left for Gretzky. Now Gretzky to the side, centering pass in front. And it is cleared away and out of play with 14.43. Remaining in the second period, the Kings leading 2-1. We gave Dodge Ram the most powerful overall line of truck engines on the planet. A driver's side airbag. The option of four-wheel anti-lock brakes. A cab designed to set the standard for comfort and room. Then, after we made Ram that good, we made it this bad. The Ram Sport. At America's Truck Stop. The new Dodge. Hey, it's me again. The little guy. Back with TGI Friday's three new Cajun dishes. Just take a look at this. Friday's new Cajun Angels. Juicy shrimp wrapped in bacon, rolled in Cajun spices, and served with a Creole mustard sauce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, called Cajun Angels because the people at Friday's know how much I hate the word shrimp. Try one of Friday's new Cajun dishes and get a free Oreo Madness for dessert. Colorado's Troy Murray is a very experienced man. He makes a great defensive play here. There he is, number 10. He's going to get to that loose puck. He sees Tony Granato. Look at the timing on that. That one sailed over the net. Otherwise, it was probably in the net. Face off to the left side of Stefan Fassett. Gets the start for the second straight night. The two young goaltenders, Stefan Fassett and Jocelyn Thibault. For Mark Crawford's former Quebec Nordiques, now the Colorado Avalanche. You know, you speak of young goaltenders, and Kelly, I'll pose this question even towards you. There was talk that maybe Colorado was going to go after Dominic Hasek in the offseason, but Mark Crawford told Brian before tonight's game he's very pleased with the combination of Fassett and Thibault. I have a couple of comments about that. Uh, last year, I had the fortune of uh, covering some of the uh, Nordique uh, Rangers series in the first round of the playoffs, and in my estimation, uh, Fassett and Thibault weren't the problem, and I really thought that they stood tall. Second thing that I'm really impressed with Mark Crawford sticking with Fassett tonight and uh, giving up two goals in the first three or four shots and showing a lot of patience. And after that, he really made a lot, like five or six great saves. Oh, he sure did. He covered very well, as did the whole team in the second and third period last night. He sure night. did. And in the neutral zone, being chased down by John Clem on the forecheck, Rick Tockett. Tockett was very disciplined with his off-season training, coming back from that back injury. And he and we mentioned it earlier, Tony Granato, such important parts of your attack this year, Kelly. Yeah, I think that Tony, in watching him uh, and observing during training camp, that he's really excited with the changes that have happened. And you can really see that he feels he's going to be a bitter, bigger part of the organization and part of the team. And, and he really has a lot of enthusiasm this year. Big puck knocked down in front. Byron Defoe. Avalanche on the offense. Mike Ricci comes away with it. Played by John Slaney. Good backhand pass. What a glove save off the shot by Adam Denmark. 
again, that's another terrific save. And certainly we will watch all the saves tonight on NHL Tonight, Tuesday through Saturday, 11.30 Eastern Time on ESPN2. Our good friend Bill Pito is your host. He'll also bring you interviews with the game's biggest stars, plus special features on this great game of hockey, the coolest game on earth. And it comes your way tonight after our game. Kelly, Byron Defoe is really sharp here tonight. Here's another good scoring chance for Colorado. He's exceptionally sharp. And what you like about this is going over with our new goaltender, Don Edwards, uh, goaltending consultant, Don Edwards, he's stressing that same sort of position that's coming out, which uh, Byron did there and took away the, the angle from the uh, Avalanche player. I want to say the Nordique player. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right. Trust me, we're going to the same thing. <laughs> yeah, we all do. <laughs> Bird back, and so is Kevin Todd. Kevin Todd there for Los Angeles. Puck squirts to the stick of Sackett. Good pass, and another save by Byron Defoe off the wrist shot from the point by Craig Willanis. You know, it's funny, in the, in the opener for Colorado last night, it was pretty funny. One of the Denver writers in the newspapers there had a great line. There was a lot of talk about, you know, educating people and all that sort of thing. They were talking about players and coaches and the atmosphere and the old Rockies and the new Avalanche and all that. He said, to let people know, he said, the Avalanche you're playing in the NHL's equivalent of the AFC. That's for the Bronco maniacs out there. I thought that was great. And it's true. It is kind of the NHL's version of the AFC. Right. It's going to be a big learning experience for the people in Denver. And, oh, yeah. Uh, the game has changed so much from when the game was last in Denver that uh, it's going to be a real oh, yeah. change for them. Absolutely. And they were into it last night. It's a great city, great sports town, and uh, they were ready for it last night. I'll tell you what, guys, that city's a lot different than it was when oh, the yeah. uh, Colorado Rockies were playing there, too. Beautiful downtown Coors Field, the excitement of baseball, and it is arguably as good a city for sports as there is now in our nation. But they trail with 13.05 remaining in the second. lightweight aluminum under tremendous stress. Protect your car in the Prestone Zone against corrosion and temperature extremes. It's your car. Protect it in the Prestone Zone. When I get a headache, I just want it gone. But now with Tylenol, two Advil work better on tough pain and not with Excedrin. That's aspirin with the ingredient in Tylenol and caffeine. I don't want that. I'll go with Advil. Advanced medicine for pain. You're going to see Wayne Gretzky try the home run pitch here. Yakmanev is streaming down the right wing side, trying to get open. Gretzky has his head up, as always, tries to get onside, just barely does. The puck got knocked down, but there you see Yakmanev. That one, if it had got through, I guarantee you it would have been right on the blade, would it not, Kelly? 99 always finds a way to get it through there. If Yakmanev can do that on a regular basis, Wayne Gretzky is going to eat it up. Right. We know that uh, Yakmanev is going to score. That's his, uh, his forte. But what I've been told from Doug Malarczyk, scout of the Toronto Maple Leafs, is that summer is that he is willing to pay the price and he can't have enough of those guys. Oh, that's for sure. Drop pass for Yari Curry. He directs it towards Stefan Fassett. Already this period, Colorado has outshot the Kings 5-2. to two. And Byron Defoe, a busy man so far. 14 shots on goal. The guy up here with us, Kelly Rudy, was as busy as there was in the NHL last year. Shots a game, almost 35 shots faced a game. Most of those played by Kelly Rudy. Of those teams you see on the list, only Pittsburgh made it to the postseason. Now, unfairly, it has been said before that, oh, wow, Kelly Rudy, the goaltending, the defense wasn't there for Los Angeles, but it was a full team defense thing, and Wayne Gretzky talked about that with me yesterday. Barry. Right, it's always been that way. Anytime you have a team sport, so one certain aspect can't be uh, solely put on one man's shoulders or four or five people. It's, it's everybody, and, and all team sports are always going to be that way. Great chance right there. That's true, and you know what? The scary thing about that was those 34 shots against, that was down from 36 the year before. That's the scary part. But for a while, I heard that they didn't have any quality ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. What is the quality? Uh, anyway. Something tells me Larry Robinson won't be happy if it goes down to 32 a game this year, guys. No, I don't think so. <laughs> no, not at all. Decision gets it ahead to Larry Kamensky. Trying to wait for Joe Sackick to get open. Instead, leads for Claude Lemieux. 
the new shifts have been a bit more infrequent than they were last night. You wonder, with just a couple of days of practice with the avalanche and the change in the altitude, how he's feeling physically in this evening's game. I think that's an advantage that they're really going to have uh, later on in the season. I know that we as a team really struggle the first little bit in Calgary, and Calgary's not even as high as Denver, so it's going to be interesting. Oh, Yachman, that was going to be so exciting, as you guys mentioned. Threats the pass to Christich. Good pass save made by Pissette. Back the other way. The point. The point fires, and he goes just wide of the net. Had a streaking Owen Nolan. Now Peter Forsberg, played by Marty McSorley. Retreating, getting it across to Olanen. Now LaPointe from the 47. Tried to play ahead. Claude LaPointe now gets the puck back in front of McSorley. An offside and a stoppage in play. The first full day of action in the National Hockey League. 11 games played in all. And the Hartford Whalers and their new star, Brendan Shanahan, get the 2-0 victory over the Rangers at home. Washington takes it to the St. Louis Blues. Dallas and Winnipeg, plenty of goals scored up in Winnipeg. Lemieux with four assists in the contest. Pittsburgh, they say they lost everything. They win decisively over Toronto. Buffalo on the road against Ottawa, victorious. Look at the Legion of Doom and the Philadelphia Flyers. Wow. Patrick Waugh gave up five goals in 22 minutes and Ouch. was pulled from the game. Ouch. Well, that, that Philadelphia team, no kidding. The Legion of Doom and everyone else, obviously through the kitchen sink at Patrick Waugh. You just said it before, Kelly. It's not on one man's shoulders. Right. you got to do the job all the way around. We'll get you the rest of the scores. Our next stoppage in play. The set leaves for John Clem. Intercepted by Yannick Perot. He's circled. Shot the save made by Fassette upstairs. Fassette off the handle of the stick, it looked like almost. Now in front of traffic, Fassette again. Colorado is not very efficient inside their own zone. They're standing around an awful lot, just either thinking their way through it, or they're just too hesitant to know when who should go on the puck area and who shouldn't. The Kings are just jumping all over those loose pucks, they're taking it to the net. They're seeing the ice very well, and it's Fassette, the guy who's paying the price for it. Pocket on the forecheck. Ricci is there to help. Back towards the point, forward and ahead by Aki Bird. Perot tries to center. Fassette takes it to the side of the net, and he'll earn the stoppage in play, but we are going to have a man advantage opportunity, a penalty called by Rob Schick. You know, at this game tonight, there haven't been very many penalties, and we all know that we don't want to see those hooking and holding penalties that we saw through the through the preseason, Kelly, and let's talk about that for a moment. I think if everybody agrees, goaltenders, forwards, everybody, nobody wants the hooking and holding. You have to agree with that. I really agree more than most people with that. Uh, uh, we really want our true superstars to shine, and I'm really, really impressed with the speed of this game and the quality of play out here, and uh, I think the fans as well will agree that when they're, tonight they're watching this game, they're seeing the real talents of a Wayne Gretzky or Joe Sackick or uh, Peter Forsberg and so on down the line as opposed to seeing a player like that do nothing more than fight through a check. Exactly. You saw an example of, or the actual play rather, of Anders Mirvold pulling down Tony Granado in front of the Colorado net and that's the reason he's in the penalty box for tripping so the Kings go back on the power play. For the third time tonight, Kings have a power play goal. It was scored by number 43, Vitaly Yachmanev, the rookie, with an assist to Gretzky, number 99. The LA Kings captain, he's on the forward line with Dmitry Krishic and Denis Segurev. One of the point men with Marty McSorley on this power play for Los Angeles. Scott Young set to take the draw against Gretzky on the left side of the set. Kachmanev tries to pick up the loose puck. Gretzky works it now behind the net. Quick centering pass cleared by Troy Murray. I'm really impressed with Scott Young. For a so-called role player, he is a very impressive player, a valuable player in the uh, Avalanche team. Absolutely. They're really happy to get him back. I mean, he's capable of scoring 30 goals. He can really rip the puck, and he can play in every type of situation. They were glad, real glad, when they signed him finally yesterday. Right. Powerful, intelligent player, Scott Young, number 48. No camp, Justin, last year the number four scorer for Colorado. McSorley now plays in the neutral zone, tries to get it ahead, pass too far for Christie. He's in on Lefebvre. Decision, dumps it high off the glass. McSorley able to keep it in for Los Angeles, gets it to the hand of Gretzky. Now Gretzky up top, McSorley back to Gretzky. Gretzky with time, fired, knocked down in front. Good defensive play made by Curtis Lecision. Nice block by there by Lecision, because when Gretzky's in that close, he's picking those top corners. Wayne does 
going to have the blistering shot, does he, Kelly? But he doesn't miss the corners much. But it's the angle that the puck comes off his stick. It's so unique. Only Wayne has that uh, shot, and that's why he scores so many goals. How do you mean the angle coming off the stick? What, what do you mean? It just seems most players sort of, the puck comes off sort of curling off the stick, and, uh -huh. and Wayne, it comes off on a different angle. It's really hard to describe, and I've faced him for eight years now in practice, and I still can't figure it out. <laughs> Ari Curry circles, gets it to Blake. Blake throws it to the far corner. Eric Lacroix is there. Tries to leave for Yannick Perot. Craig will land in behind the net, checking Perot. Perot gets it back to Curry. 23 seconds left in the Los Angeles Kings power play. Now Curry on the near side. Curry looking for help. Back to Yari Curry. Quickly to Rob Blake. Yari Curry works it on the near side. Puck movement frequent. Blake shot deflected just wide. Colorado playing a pretty static box. They're not moving up to the boards. Now they are because the puck was loose, but they're playing a pretty tight box. The Kings can move it around. Centered in front. Knocked down. Ricci clears into the neutral zone. Anders Mirabold out of the box, and Colorado has successfully killed off the Kings' power play. Eight minutes, three seconds remaining in the second period. 2-1 Los Angeles. Shot saved. Byron Defoe. We'll continue our conversation with Kelly Rudy as he watches the man in the net tonight, Defoe, playing well. You've got one last chance. The very last Faulkner Automotive Armory sale of the year. Three days only. This Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, with fresh inventories arriving daily. Save thousands. As Faulkner liquidates $5 million of excess used car and truck inventory. Looking to spend $2,000 or $20,000? It's here. One location only. The National Guard Armory in Northeast Philadelphia. The Faulkner Automotive Used Car and Truck Armory sale. Don't miss it. Sunday night NFL on TNT looks at the linebacker, plays defense, roguishly independent, loves to hit people, feeds off intimidation, brute force, relentless pursuits. So what do you think happens when he has to wait till Sunday night to play? Yeah, there's something about Sunday night football. Sunday night NFL on TNT. Brought to you locally by O'Neill Buick. For your best Buick deal, come see O'Neill. And by the Aquatic and Fitness Center at Pennypack. Aquatic physical therapy and exercise for the Philadelphia... In our Bristol studios to check on the Blackhawks and Sharks. Jeremy Roenick rushing up the ice and unleashing a bomb that beats Urbay Chicago of 2-1. Back to Mike at the Fab Forum. Thank you, Reese. Played by Marty McSorley. He gets it ahead to Tony Granato. Granato working in front of Mirabal. Great move to the backhand pass. Save for set. Nice move there by Tony Granato. Anders Mirabal, the rookie for Colorado, got a lesson there. He looked down at the puck for a second, and Granato was by him. Granato with those quick feet out of Downers Grove, Illinois. Former star at the University of Wisconsin. Really earning a lot of ice time tonight, too. He sure is. He's got those great wheels. Everybody loves speed, and Tony can certainly give that to you. He's got great hands, too. We've seen his, his confidence level ebb and flow, certainly, over the last couple of years, mixed in with injuries uh, a lot of the time. But uh, when Tony's on, there's there's nobody better going up and down the line. You just absolutely love to have him on your team. Oh, he yeah. is a true teammate. Yeah. Tony Granato, 31 years old, member of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. Sackett. Stripped by Tockett, here comes Tockett. Looks to the backhand, has John Drews. Looks it ahead to Drews, now long breaking towards the post. Drews' shot, pad safe to set, held his ground. Check on Robert, long of five, now Tockett in traffic. Tockett working. And forward it ahead to Valeri Kamensky, number 13. He gets it to Denmark. Oh, oh, shot, score! Joe Sackett! I'll tell you who makes the play on this is Valeri Kaminsky. He took the hit. He knew Marty McSorley was coming. He knew he was going to get hit hard. He brought McSorley way over to the boards, threw it down low, and then the pass across to Joe Sackick. That's how to sacrifice. We're going to get a look at it. Here's Kaminsky. He can see McSorley coming. He absorbs it. He dishes the puck up. You can see the pass across there from Dead Marsh to Sackick once again. Look at that body control. Great job by Sackick to reach back for that one. Nothing Byron Defoe can do here. But you can see Sackick. 
Sackick had to reach back there, maintain his balance, and scoop it into the empty net. It looks easy after the fact, doesn't it, Kelly? But there's nothing Byron the Foe could do there. Great job. Absolutely nothing Byron can do there. I really agree 100% with you, Brian, and that uh, Kaminsky again made the play. And I watched the game last night also. And uh, in watching Valerie Kaminsky, I had an opportunity to watch him in 1986 in the World Championships, Canada against uh, Russia in, the, uh, in Moscow. And he blew a shot by me that I honestly did not move, and it went right through the net. And play continued on, and I was the most thankful person in the arena. Nobody else saw it go through the net. When you said you were watching him, I didn't realize you were watching him so slow. <laughs> yes, I was playing. I see. <laughs> Detmarsh gains one of the assists on the goal by Joe Sackick. Coming in 13-23 of the second period. Kaminsky and Detmarsh. The goal by Sackick, and it is 2-2. Two -two. Sackick continuing to be one of the leaders of this now Colorado Avalanche, former Quebec Nord deep franchise. One of the things that most people talk about when they talk about Joe Sackick is his playmaking ability, but I can tell you firsthand that he has a terrific shot, and it's deceptively hard and extremely accurate. Has he blown one by you too, Kel? He, everybody has. <laughs> he scored more than his fair share. I have, Kel. I'd remember if I had. <laughs> I was gonna, no, I'm was going to go easy on you, Brian. It's early in the night, Mike. I appreciate that. You make a comment about goalies not wearing masks. I know. Then, you know oh, really black and white TV and all that. Yeah, that's right. Talk to the glove save by the set. Thanks. It's really easy, Brian. Yeah, I knew with that layout that you were just playing radio. Did we I, I appreciate that, yeah. Great. Thanks for rolling on radio. Oh, you guys are brutal. Rob Blake up to the near side. Played there by Yannick Perot. Headman to Granado. He's brought down. No call by Rob Schick. Tockett working Scott Young. Tockett throws towards net. Deflected by Fassette. Cleared back into the neutral zone. Played by Rob Blake. Tony has to kind of fight that, what we used to call the Bill Barber syndrome. He made that one look a little too good. The referees don't call it oftentimes on Tony because he died too well. Here's Troy Murray. His shot deflected and out of play. 4.38 remains in the period. We are tied at two at the four. the three bears your double whopper 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 junior bing bang boom i'm hungry so what well nothing just sort of struck me as funny so what are you saying i'm like the mama bear <laughs> a whopper value meal for any size appetite starting at 199 every day at burger king that's getting your burgers worth hey uh, baby bear you gonna finish those fries yes Ooh, somebody needs a nap <clears throat> Joe Sackick, strong performance tonight, his eighth NHL season, two goals on two shots. And he has been the dominant force, as well as anybody in the NHL. Five times this decade, he has led his team in scoring. Wayne Gretzky equals that five times also this decade. Last year was not one of those. But I'll tell you what, well done for Joe Sackick again. Well, that, those are unbelievable stats, and there was a pretty nice list of characters, too, on the rest of that list. And Sackick played on some pretty poor teams in Quebec there for a few years here, and, too, and did he was virtually all they had a couple of times, wasn't he, Kel? He was. I'm surprised with that, though, with uh, Matt Sandin there as well, though. Matt Sandin is, uh, as we all know, dominating as well. But uh, yeah. Joe Sackick is showing his true uh, character in, in stats like that. Yeah. Well, it was Sandin who broke a streak of about three or four consecutive years for Joe Sackick, ironically, Kelly. Dean came in with that big year. It was a year that Sackick also had over 100 points in the season. Right. He is dominating, in my opinion, when he wants to play as well as he can. He's so big and strong and, uh, and uh, quick out there that uh, Sunday really rules the ice. Team captain since 1992. He's got a new teammate this year, Claude Lemieux, number 22, and those two should be dynamic. McSorley. Uh, 
met there by LaPointe, and then John Drews tries to help out. O'Donnell will dump it in behind the net. Sean O'Donnell is a surprising player, and he really came in this year in training camp with uh, probably people wondering if he has a chance of making the team or not. He's really shown a lot of composure out there, and he's really had a terrific camp, and consequently, look where he is. Yeah, he's one of the two or three real surprises that you guys had. He's done a good job from what I've heard, Kelly, and you certainly saw more than I did, but he plays within himself. He knows what he can't do, and that's a big secret to playing in the NHL. You are exactly right there, Brian. That's exactly what Sean O'Donnell does, and that's what's very, very noticeable about it. And he's big and strong. He always liked that. Right. Now Owen Nolan plays. Good check behind the net. Thrown by Andres Mierholt. Nolan in traffic in his own end. Back into the neutral zone. Played by Yari Curry. Two minutes and 45 seconds remaining in this second period. Curry down the center of the ice. Left for long. He was knocked off the play nicely by John Clem. Back coming the other way. Andre Kovalenko leads for Denmark. Shot stick save made by Defoe. Positionally, Byron is right on his game tonight. He, he was dead center there, wasn't he? Now Denmarsh works around the defenseman. Recovering was Aki Berg. Gets a stick on the shot, and it deflects away. Well, Claude Lemieux is a man who came in and played his very first game as a Colorado Avalanche last night. He'd only had two days working out with the team. Missed training camp altogether. He said training camp was overrated, which I'm sure every player in the NHL loved to hear. But one of the funniest things he said was in the morning before yesterday's game. He was huffing and puffing, and he was going to play the game that night. And they said, hey, you've only skated for two days. How do you feel out there? And he said, not very good, but I think I'd feel just as bad at sea level. <laughs> and at sea level here tonight. So I think he's finding out that, yeah, it's true. We haven't seen that much of him, or at least in the early stages of this second period. Uh, he wasn't out as much as, as he was in the first period. I think he is higher. But the funny thing with it, about a player like that is that he always comes and rises to the occasion when yep. you need him. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him do something big for the Avalanche in the third period. Absolutely. He assisted on the winning goal last night. 13 goals, 16 points in the playoffs for Claude Lemieux winning the Conn Smythe. As the playoff MVP last year had just six goals in the regular season. Gretzky dangling in the corner. Now Peter Forsberg working behind. Swings it around. Save in front by Defoe. Yachmanet tries to clear. Forsberg keeps it in. Gretzky is there. Well, was right. The radar picked up that one. What a great interception of a pass that was. Yachmanet now. Oh, what a spin. He goes to the back. and shoots just wide. Jeremy Roney. That was a nice little spin around with him. Hooking penalty forthcoming. NFL game day tomorrow starting at 11.45 a.m. Eastern time. Chris Berman and the crew get set for your day's action in the National Football League. Football's best pregame show. Tomorrow's show will include an update on the status of Cowboy quarterback Troy Aikman and the professional football baptism of Redskins rookie receiver Michael Westbrook. Will Aikman play? That and all the answers tomorrow on ESPN game day. Chris Berman and the crew. Well, Vitaly Akmanov has a, one of the goals for the Kings tonight. Look at this. Little Jeremy Roenick there. Excellent control there. Not a bad job. It was well played by Lefebvre. Lefebvre is one of the best defensemen in the league. You're not going to fool him with that stuff, but we'll look for more of that from Yachmanet. Pretty impressive. Very impressive. Not only is uh, making a move by, like that, but getting it right to the net. Yeah. Ronick and the Blackhawks near the Forum tonight, playing on the West Coast to start their season, and they will take on the Los Angeles Kings in just a couple of days. They try to return on a good season with a healthy Jeremy Roenick. They'll be featured on National Hockey Night ESPN next Thursday night from the United Center. One minute, 15 seconds remaining in the second period of play. The lone goal scored by Joe Sackick to tie our game at two apiece. Sackick's goal coming with assists to Valeri Kamensky, his second assist of the night, and Adam Denmarsh at 13.23 of the period. McSorley ahead, too far for time, and Sylvain Lefebvre will chase it down. Yannick Perot in on the forecheck. Cleared to the near side. McSorley pinches in. Takes a small hit from LeCision. Now Tockett leaves on the backhand for Perot. Perot back to Tockett. Tockett now works on the outside. Power play opportunity again for the Kings. Their fourth of the game. Well, Larry 
Kaminsky is getting a lot of ice time. This guy is in shape. He can skate. They called him the Russian Wayne Gretzky for a long time, and he's shown it here tonight again. Pocket leads for Granado. Granado shot in traffic. Good save by Stefan Fassett, and I don't think he could really see that shot coming off because his own defender seemed to almost screen him trying to block the shot, Kelly. I think that's where experience really comes into play. I don't know if five years ago or four years ago you might have seen Fassett be able to do that. And from watching him years ago, he probably would have been further back in his net under the crossbar. And uh, again, with experience, he's out on the top of his crease tonight and made that look easy. And that's a tough save. That's right, because Ricci had dropped down in front of him, and he tried to block that shot, but he slapped his legs down. His legs came up, and the puck went underneath him. Fassett had to pick that one out coming out from underneath the player. That's tough. I know as a shot blocker, when you go down, you, you can't double cross the goaltender. You've got to take away that bottom layer of the ice, and then you, you as the goaltender have whatever above me if I'm going down, right? That's absolutely correct. Not only is it uh, nice uh, with the experience, but uh, it doesn't hurt when you're 6'1 or 6'2 like Fassett is. Yeah, that's true. 50 seconds left in the man advantage but just 20 seconds remaining in this second period. Byron Defoe leaves for Aki Berg. Berg, the third overall pick, playing in his first regular season NHL contest, head man to Robert Long. Yari Curry now. Curry across to a streaking Blake, broken up on the play by Mike Ricci. Watch out for long shot at the end of the period. It is squirted wide. Kelly Rudy enjoyed having you as our guest here in the second period. Want to see you on the ice get healthy soon. Thanks, guys. I had a lot of fun. Kelly Rudy, the club MVP of the Kings one year ago. The Kings in the Avalanche tied at two after two. Sports Smash is next. Here's an uplifting thought for the weary traveler. Come home to Sealy's most advanced posturepedic ever for the back support you need. Now, the only foundation made from steel beams, not wood, is redesigned to be even stronger. Now, Sealy has a more sensitive sense and respond coil system, and its patented sensory arm senses and cushions your movement, then responds to your weight with increasing support, correct support, making Sealy America's favorite destination. Posturepedic support, only from Sealy. And over your head sometimes. You can learn to love it. People from all over are giving a whole new meaning to getting in over your head. They found out just how easy and how fun it can be to discover the breathtaking world of scuba. Find out for yourself by picking up the phone right now and calling 1-800-862-DIVE for free information. Come on, get in over your head. Dear car owners, some car repair shops have the same answer to every brake problem. You need new brakes. But that's not the Midas way. We'll use our written 45-step brake inspection for an accurate diagnosis. We'll explain your repair options so you can be involved in what the job will cost. And we'll give you a nationwide guarantee on brake shoes and pads for as long as you own your car. That's why it's always worth getting your brakes fixed the Midas way. The way it should be. Jerry, we're about to meet Freddy Fest. Oh, there he is. Yeah, how you doing, man? Hey, guys, what's in the bag? McDonald's juicy quarter pounder with cheese. Two for two bucks, Mr. Half Size Half Pack. Hey, I'll trade your autograph for them. Oh, hey, Mr. Rushmeister. I'll trade your autograph football. Ah, uh, it's not gonna happen here, Rocket Toast. Season tickets. Got him. Skybox. <laughs> Now you can convert two bucks into two hot, tempting quarter pounders with cheese or two morning fresh sausage McMuffins with egg. But the clock's ticking, so hurry. And this just in. Superstar running back Barry Sanders is involved in some kind of major trade. Have you had your break today? Communication involves a sender, a receiver, a medium, and a message. Listen carefully. <laughs> Did you hear that? Tonight's intermission report is presented by the new Dodge. We're thinking ahead. Welcome to the new Dodge intermission report. I'm Reese Davis. We're in the second intermission. Kings and Avalanche all tied up at two. Let's take you on a swing around the first full night of ice capades in the NHL. Our first stop, Whale and the Rangers. Sean Burke strong between the pies for Hartford. Former Whaler Pat for Beak tries a kick safe. It was indeed a beauty. Brian Leach tries the short side. I don't think so. Whalers finally turn on the red light. Glenn Wesley, the long slapper. Hartford wins it 2-0. Toronto and Pittsburgh, an emotional return for Super Mario after sitting out last season. Boy, does he get things started. An assist to Ron Francis, four assists for Lemieux on the night. We're tied at one. 
but the pens blow it wide open. Check out Yager. Draw and dish the Sergei Zuboff pens win it eight to three. Flyers and Canadiens. Patrick Waugh trying to rebound from an off year. The Flyers test him early. The dump in. John LeClaire, neat pass. Lindros puts it home. 2 nothing Flyers. Still in the first. Lindros starts the rush. The Legion of Doom. Lindbergh, no. LeClaire, yes. 7-1. The Flyers over the Canadiens. Panthers and Devils. Jersey raising the Stanley Cup banner. He's a bit of a face painter. Hey, that dude was on Seinfeld. Check it out here. Bobby Holik, the shot's kicked aside, but John McClain, die hard. 1-0 Devils. 2-0 Devils in the third. Sean Chambers. Looking for the star of that die hard movie again. McClain, second goal of the game, or a sequel if you wish. 4-0 the Devils win it. Isles and Bees skate to a 4-4 tie. Cam Neely had a hat trick in the first game in the new Fleet Center. Washington over St. Louis, 4-1. Pat Peak, a goal and an assist. Camp's doing it without Bondra and Pavanka, who are holding out. Calgary and Tampa Bay skate to a 3-3 tie. Dallas and Winnipeg, 7-5 the final. Nikolai Habibu won 38 saves, including stopping all 18 shots in the third period. Buffalo over Ottawa, 3-1. Buffalo was outshot 39-19. We've heard this story before. Dominic Hasek, the Vezina Trophy winner, 38 saves. Blackhawks up on San Jose, 3-1. Daze and Danny Savard, two of the goal scorers for the Blackhawks. Baseball, Yankees and Mariners, they're not booing. They're saying, Moose, Moose. And the Moose loses it, and, and he's saying, out, sort of disturbing there. Unfortunately, the Moose actually broke his ankle on this play, and and in a lot of pain. It was not a bad omen for the Mariners, though. Bases juice for Edgar Martinez in the eighth, and that is a four-run homer, commonly referred to as a grand slam. Seven RBIs for Edgar on the night. Mariners go up 10-6. Top nine, two out, 11-8 M, two on Bernie Williams. This would tie the game, but they built the ballpark just big enough for a home field advantage. Mariners win it 11-8 to, to force the game five on Sunday. Martinez, seven RBIs, most ever in a postseason game. It'll be Cone against Bennett to decide it. National League, Rockies and Braves, top three, no score. Greg Maddox against Dante Bichette. Dante, the Inferno, the three-run clout puts the Rockies up 3 nothing. But the Bravos storm back, bottom three. Larry, his friends often call him Chipper Jones, gets it past Bichette, Gresham and Lemke score. Next batter, the crime dog, Fred McGriff. Bye-bye. Two-run shot off Saber Hagen. Braves take a 4-3 lead. Now in the bottom of the fifth, McGriff enjoyed it so much he's going to try it again. Solo job off Kevin Ritz. McGriff had five RBIs on the evening. Braves go on to win it 10-4. They win the series 3-1. They now face the Reds in the NLCS. You're checking out the new Dodge intermission report after two. Colorado and L.A. tied at two. We're back with more after this. Visibility and cab forward roominess will brighten your outlook. Its dual airbags and steel door beams will help you feel safe and protected. And its fuel injected multi valve engine will put a smile on your face. Dodge Neon. It brings a whole new meaning to the phrase, have a nice day. $99.95 for starters, around 13.3, nicely equipped. <laughs> than the boys, the pretty girl who never wanted to be a cheerleader, the girl who turned her back on the in crowd, has risen above the rest. Welcome back to the new Dodge Intermission Report. Let's do a little college football. Miami's Hurricanes packing all the punch of an afternoon drizzle lately, taking on Florida State. Let's check it out in Tallahassee. <laughs> Deion Sanders getting his jersey, number two retired. We'll have to wait till next year. Samari Roll wearing it now. Second quarter, Danny Connell. 
Upstairs, Andre Cooper hanging with Mr. Cooper. And Cannell's going to hang with Mr. Cooper one more time. Andre by himself, oh, a little hypnotized and vandalized. Cooper's second TD of the game. Florida State wins it 41 to 17. Warwick Dunn, a career high 184 yards rushing. One other late game, Stanford up on Arizona State 23 14. Let's do some upsets. Kansas knocked off fourth ranked Colorado. Coy Detmer re injured in this game. He'll have surgery to repair that torn ACL and he's gone for the year. Actually, this is not an upset. Ohio State does beat Penn State 28-25 to avenge last year's big loss. This is an upset. Northwestern over Michigan. First time the Cats have won in the big house since 1959. Texas Tech snaps A&M's 29-game unbeaten streak in the SWC. And Notre Dame bumps Washington 29-21. Derek May, a couple of TD catches. Grambling beats Mississippi Valley State 42-6. Number 400 for Eddie Robinson. We're going to get you back for the third period. Mike Goldberg and Brian Engbon soon. Most new car radiators are made of thin, lightweight aluminum under tremendous stress. Protect your car in the Prestone Zone against corrosion and temperature extremes. It's your car. Protect it in the Prestone Zone. My brother, my brother, I can't believe. Spend all your dough on weekend leave. Gotta call home, but you ain't got no cash. You gonna eat that corned beef hash? Call 1-800-COLLECT. Save him some butt. It's the event everyone's been waiting for. The Tony the Tiger sweepstakes. Just call Tony at 1-800-779-TONY from a touchstone phone and punch in the UPC number from a box of Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. You could win the grand prize trip for four to the Australian Outback or one of ten first prize trips to the San Diego Zoo. Every 500th caller gets a free Tony the Tiger watch. So call Tony today. It's easy to enter. I won! Oh, and thousands will win. Pizza, pizza. Cut, 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 cut. Caesar, you gotta tell the world. Delivery, delivery. Pizza, pizza. No, delivery. Pizza. D, D. P, P. Pizza, pizza. I used to think he was pizza, cute, pizza. but now he's starting to bug pizza, me. Pizza. Maybe we should use one of the backups. Backups, take one. Oh. Let's just go with what we've got. Delivery, delivery. Yeah! Now get the pizza, pizza salad special. Two Little Caesars pizzas and a fresh express farm salad, all for one low price. From the creator of T2 and Aliens, it's the turn of the century. I'm the magic man. He sells other people's lives for entertainment. Straight from the cerebral cortex. They're there. You're feeling it. But now, through the eyes of a murderer... It's a setup! He's uncovered a conspiracy. You know how high up the food chain this thing goes. And they've discovered him. Go! Strange Days, directed by Catherine Bigelow. Rated R. Friday at theaters everywhere. Western Forum. This is the new Dodge intermission report after two periods of play. The Los Angeles Kings and the Colorado Avalanche skating to a two-all tie. Mike Goldberg, Brian Engblom upstairs. And Brian, I'll tell you what, Los Angeles got off to a great start in this hockey game. They scored both their goals within the first seven minutes of the first period. And since then, Colorado's quietly stepped right back into it. I think they have. Colorado's starting to establish themselves certainly better than they did in the early stages. The Kings still have a lot of confidence. They seem to be moving the puck around very well. But I think Colorado's starting to come on and it's Joe Sackick that's leading the way. Yeah, Joe Sackick with both goals in the contest for the Colorado Avalanche has found himself on the doorstep in perfect position on two occasions. But the play here is made by Kaminsky along the boards. Look at him and absorb this hit. That's a great play, an unselfish play. Gets it to dead mark. Sackick is low and on the other side. Great body control there. Feels the puck and shoots it into the empty net. But that was outstanding. You mentioned Jeremy Roenick. He's up the road, has a goal tonight against San Jose, and this is Roenick light by Vitaly Yakmenev. 
Smith. He's showing a lot of confidence here tonight. That was an excellent controlled spin there, and he got the puck to the net. Now, here's a shot where uh, Kelly Rooney mentioned it. Here's Fassett going down and tracking that puck very well. You can see one of his players went down in front of him. I think it was Clem tried to block that puck. He was unsuccessful. It's very difficult for the goaltender to pick that up. He did a great job and made a big save. And a good job done in front of a screen applied by Rick Tockett also. Statistics through two periods of play. Shots on goal were pretty even in the first period, and in the contest, they continue to be that way. Los Angeles out shooting the Colorado Avalanche by four. Face-offs, though, could turn out to be a factor later in the contest. They sure they sure might be, and, and those face-offs are a little bit misleading there because in the end zone, uh, it's unbelievable. The Kings have done an outstanding job in winning most face-offs by far and away inside the zone. Now, the Los Angeles Kings tonight playing their first game of the year. Colorado, their second in as many nights. It'll be interesting to see how much legs are left in this Colorado team in the third period. That's true. I think a couple of guys are really hurting out there. Yeah, we'll take a look at that and many other things when we return for the third period of action from the Great Western Forum. What do you like best about Sprint Sense? 10 cents a minute. The rates are a flat rate. It's no wonder over the last few months so many people have signed up for Sprint Sense. 10 cents a minute every evening and all weekend long. Here's a special offer for Comcast customers. Call now and get 30 minutes free every month for a year. It's as simple as that. One minute, two minutes. A dime a minute is a wonderful deal. What are you paying for a minute of long distance? Comcast customers, call now and get 30 minutes free every month for a year. Sunday night NFL on TNT looks at the linebacker, plays defense, roguishly independent, loves to hit people, feeds off intimidation, brute force, relentless pursuits. So what do you think happens when he has to wait till Sunday night to play? Yeah, there's something about Sunday night football. Sunday night NFL on TNT. Brought to you locally by DeSimone Auto Sales and Service, Harbison and Frankfurt, Northeast Philadelphia. And by Tacconi Palmyra Billiard Club, the Rolls Royce of billiard rooms in the Delaware Valley. Involves a sender, a receiver, a medium, and a message. Listen carefully. <laughs> Did you hear that? Fire on ice. ESPN 2's coverage of the National Hockey League is brought to you by the new Dodge. We're thinking ahead. And by McDonald's. Have you had your break today? After two, our score is 2-2 two -two on the deuce. And this is game two of our doubleheader. Colorado and Los Angeles. Joe Sackick with both goals. The lone score coming in the second period of play at 13:23 with assists to Valerie Kamensky and Adam Deadmarsh. Joe Sackick has put on quite a show here this evening. Uh, he was a force last night, but not nearly the way he is here tonight. You can see his numbers on tonight. He's had the puck all the time. Every time he's out there, he's got it. He's gone back and forth inside the zone, controlled it, set up a couple, and has scored both of their goals. And Wayne Gretzky has his first point of this NHL season, an assist on the power play goal by Vitaly Yakmanev. 17 minutes and 20 seconds logged by Wayne Gretzky so far this evening. Mark Crawford patiently worked his way through the minors and juniors, and you talked to him before the game, a very confident young man as the head coach, and Larry Robinson in his debut as the head coach of the Los Angeles Kings this evening. Well, that's true. The, the interesting thing is uh, Larry Robinson is certainly older than Crawford, but he has no head coach experience. Of course, two years as an assistant coach with New Jersey. Crawford, meanwhile, is second year in the NHL, but he had six years as a head coach. A couple of years in junior, a couple of years in the minors. So Crawford had the edge of being behind the bench. And for Larry Robinson, he's got help back there. He's got a couple of guys there in Rick Green and John Perpich that are going to help spread things out. And uh, Crawford certainly has help behind his, too. So in today's NHL, it's, the coaches need a lot of help from their assistants. There you see Robinson, see John Perpich that he just walked by there. Farther up the way is Rick Green. And you have to spread out the, the duties. Larry is not used to being in charge behind the bench as far as changing all the lines and everything in New Jersey. Of course, he was in charge of the defenseman, uh, and Jacques Lemaire made all the uh, changes as far as the uh, forwards. Take a look at those numbers. That is unbelievable. You can call that destiny. You can call it he's certainly a great player. You can call it whatever you want, but uh, not too many players can say that. That's incredible. 20 years as a player. Never missed the playoffs. The majority of those, of course, is a member of the Montreal Canadiens. Rick Green, the new assistant coach, 15 years in the NHL, and he paired with Robinson in 86 when the Habs won the Cup. 
quick two-line pass and an offside called in a stoppage in play. You know, going back to 99 Wayne Gretzky again, I've watched him enough over the last several years to know, and I've seen him in his ups and downs. The team has not played very well. We've heard comments from him about last year in particular. He made a, he made a two-line pass just a minute ago that was just a two-line pass by a hair, and he made it to Yakmanev again. And Yakmanev is a young guy who's just out of junior, but he's on the fly. Gretzky loves winners that love to go. Here he is. It's just a hair offside. You can see that. There's Yakmanev. And look how much room Yakmanev would have had, but it was two lines. Yakmanev has proven that he can score goals in the OHL the last two years, respectively. 53 and 61 goals. Two years of over 100 points. Well, Wayne Gretzky is a playmaker more than a goal scorer. We all know that. He likes to set up the plays. But if nobody is really scaring, uh, scoring for him, rather, then uh, it, it really kind of gets him depressed, I think, and we've seen him go through the last two years. Dmitry Christian's up ahead. Here's Yakmanev, the man we spoke of. Back across to Dmitry Christian, acquired in the offseason from the Washington Capitals, along with Byron Defoe. Now Yakmanev, up left for Curtis Kishishin. Kishishin in traffic, trying to get it across. Dresky one-timer, glove save made by Stefan Fassett. She is called the fabulous sports bay. ESPN's one and only brings her unique look at the world of sports to ESPN2, the Deuce. The Babe will be with you every Monday through Friday on the Deuce. Spend an hour with the Babe, and yes, your life will never be the same. <laughs> Monday through Friday, 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 o'clock Pacific. Check out the fabulous sports bay. There is Aki Berg, the number one draft choice of the Kings this year, only 18 years of age, and this kid can really play. He's uh, from Finland. He's got great ex uh, great abilities with the puck. He can move it up the ice. They say he's an excellent open ice hitter, too, impaired with Rob Blake, who can really do that kind of thing. These two guys could be a real menace to forwards on the other team. Once Berg gets settled in, that'll probably be one of the last parts of this game that'll, that'll come into uh, play. He can really move the puck well in great position. Mike Ricci shot deflected high over the net, and Byron Defoe. We two tie Kovalenko battling behind with Rob Blake. And there's another guy who missed a lot of games last year. Blake was in the lineup only 24 games, half of the shortened season due to recurring groin injuries. And I can tell you that Blake being out of the lineup so much was a direct reason, or the direct result, rather, was that the Kings did not make the playoffs. There's Aki Bird, who's going to play a lot with Rod Blake. The problem is that Rob can't talk to him. He doesn't speak English. He <laughs> says Coca-Cola, and that's about it. Uh, he and Rob Blake go by sign language, but this kid knows the game. And uh, the two men behind the bench, Robinson and Rick Green in particular, two ex-defensemen, can communicate with him on the chalkboard. And Rob Blake kind of motions to him, yells his name, and he has the instincts to play this game. And at 18 years of age, Playing defense in the National Hockey League is not easy. It's quite an accomplishment already just to be there. Larry Kamensky, Dennis Segura, Yannick Perot in to help for Los Angeles. There's Claude Lemieux, his first shift to the third period. Loose puck picked up by Segura. He headmans it to the near side, and Tony Granado. Granado tries to flip it across, makes the pass successfully. Pat save off the shot by Yannick Perot. Facet has stood up and made some good saves this evening. Traffic, Ritakin. It leads for the point, man. Segura has set with the glove save, and he'll hang on. Tony Granado going to the net for rebounds. There was none there, and Fissette has to uh, swallow them up with guys like Granado around. Tony will always go to the net. Stefan Fissette has been very strong in net. He's done his share. His team did not get off to a very good start. Down 2-0 early in that first period, kind of similar to their game last night, but he has battled back once again. So has his team, and they are deadlocked again at two, just like they were last night. Well, Claude Lemieux, last year's Conn Smythe winner, the MVP, our trivia question tonight who are the only two players to be traded the year after they won the Conn Smythe trophy I think you know who one of them is you may know who the other is I'll tell you in a moment from the point McSorley wrist shot rebound in front still loose Conacher tries to jump in now Kevin Todd tries to get it with the backhand McSorley keeps it in flips it to the near side played by Pat Conacher ahead to Eric Lacroix behind the net Lacroix with help from Kevin Todd now Lacroix spinning out nicely is the rookie of the year from one season ago, Peter Forsberg. Forsberg keeps it into the L.A. and now Conacher plays off the board. John Slaney's there at the far point. Kevin Todd with Scott Young. Lift up ahead, McSorley, Conacher, pass intercepted by Craig Wolanis. Now Conacher works, Lacroix has to clear the zone, so Conacher retreats, gives to Daryl Sador. Sador takes the shot, tried to flip around Wolanis, poked away. 
Now here comes Owen Nolan. Molanen dumps on net. Molanen had a good goal last night. Big shot from just inside the blue line to beat Mike Vernon. One of the three goals scored by the Colorado Avalanche. They scored the opening night victory over the Red Wings at home 3-2. The other two goals were scored by Valeri Kamensky. Tonight, Joe Sackick has two goals on two shots. We are tied at two apiece with 16 and a half minutes remaining in the third period. Both teams playing pretty tight defensively right now. Neither one of them wants to make a mistake with that tie game. A mistake could mean the game, even though it's early. Good pass to Christian. He leaves Gretzky one time with just wide. And the flip back goes wider than that again for the side of Stefan Pissette. Now Gretzky trying to flip it across to the point to Blake. Retreating now the Kings as Claude LaPointe plays. LaPointe tries to leave for a teammate. Still handles the puck now and gets it over to Troy Murray. Murray, number 10, tangling on the near boards. John Clem in to help out from the point. Clem fires the wrist shot. And holding on is Byron Defoe. 15-55 remains in the third. Tie hockey game. arguments for sliding doors on both sides were brought to you courtesy of the new Dodge Caravan. Just as original as the original. Most new car radiators are made of thin, lightweight aluminum under tremendous stress. Protect your car in the Prestone Zone against corrosion and temperature extremes. It's your car. Protect it in the Prestone Zone. My dandruff and itch are awful. I'll try anything. Denerex tingles. Head and shoulders doesn't. Both have effective dandruff medicine, but Denerex has something extra that tingles, feels fresh. That's why I started using Denerex. No flakes, no itch. Denerex, the serious dandruff shampoo. Trivia time here on the Dukes. The question once again, who are the only two players to be traded the year after they won the Conn Smythe Trophy? How about Claude Lemieux, now a Colorado Avalanche? Wayne Gretzky, 1988, a member of the Edmonton Oilers. And the next season, he was traded right here to the Los Angeles Kings. Big shot from the point from John Clem, and Byron Defoe makes the save. What a feeling it must be to raise Lord Stanley's Cup, be the star of the playoffs for your team, the playoff MVP, and then the next year be traded to a different franchise. There is Gretzky, 87-88, his fourth cup with the Oilers. And then last year, Claude Lemieux, what a playoff he had. 13 goals, 3 assists, 16 points. And you can see the effect it had on Claude Lemieux there. He was in tears when they gave him that trophy. He's just so emotionally spent. There's so much joy there. There's so much pain from all everything you went through. What an effort that man put out last year in the spring. And all the people in New Jersey were really happy he did. This year, perhaps, he'll have a chance to go back against his New Jersey Devils, theoretically, for the Stanley Cup again. Off to the left side of Byron Defoe, Yari Curry, number 17. Leaves for Robert Long. Here's Curry again. Yari Curry, the number three all-time active goal scorer. Could he have a chance for another pass just too far in front of him from Robert Long? Now up the far side, Andre Kovalenko dumps to the side. Adam Denmark quickly in, working behind the net. Checked on the play by Dennis Segura. Tries to wrap around. Segura gets a stick puck, still free. Now Segura tries to beat Denmarsh again. Denmarsh moving the feet nicely uh, to the ice. No call from the referee, Rob Schick. Curry tried to flip it past Forsberg at the blue line. Puck squirts in front, but Denmarsh can't wheel and throw a shot towards net. Volanen, now Kovalenko. Quick shot off the crossbar and out of play. Oh, talk about quick hands and a quick shot there. That one had Byron Defoe beat. He got his hand up. He got a small piece of it. That clanked off the crossbar and way up into the seat. Kovalenko with those quick hands. Let's see if we can pick it up sound-wise and watch it here. Kovalenko is going to crank it. Oh, yeah. Oh, right on the either. button. Yeah. Boy, great hands there by Kovalenko. He just snapped that one right in the crook of the arm. I thought that Defoe got a piece of it. I don't think so on that second look at it. One of the toughest saves for a goaltender to make. Mike is right in that crook of the arm. Do you use your arm? Do you use your glove? Sometimes you get caught halfway in between. And that puck was zipped by Kovalenko. 
Tony Granado works on with Claude Lemieux. Now Will Landon up to the far side. McSorley throws towards net. Knocked down in front by Will Landon. Ahead to Lemieux. Daryl Sador is there for Los Angeles. Bouncing puck controlled nicely by Will Landon. Three on two. Will Landon just shoots it towards net. McSorley will help with the rebound off the stick of Byron Defoe. Now back to the neutral zone. Lemieux. Bounces free for Rowe, tries to advance. McSorley there to help out for the Kings. McSorley beats Sackick. Now decision there defensively for Colorado. Sador. Head mans it nicely. Here's Tockett. Tockett fires. Wrist shot. Good save by Fassett with the glove. Now Perot. Perot shot off the side of the net. Decision on the forecheck. Tockett. Tockett there nicely. Gets it to Granado. Granado couldn't handle. Oh, and Nolan comes the other way. Colorado did a good job recovering themselves. Uh, Yannick Perot had that good chance. They got the shot on net. Colorado got back in position. Came out under control. Owen Nolan trying to help in on the forecheck with Peter Forsberg. Nolan with 30 goals last year. Tied for number two in the NHL. Nolan winds it around. Krzyzewicz with Warren Reichel. Four check on the boards, pinching in from the point. For the Avalanche. Now it's free to Nolan. Nolan looking for Reichel. Nolan keeps it himself. Throws it in front. Kretzky's there. Kretzky for Krzyzewicz. Kristich wants to work the outside on John Clef. Good move back towards the net. And pushed off the play was the youngster, Vitaly Yachmenev. There will be a Los Angeles Kings power play forthcoming. Right now, though, let's check out our head and shoulder storyline. So far in our contest, Conacher was the first goal scorer, giving the Kings the lead one to nothing. Just 30 seconds into the first period, Joe Zakic. Great productivity, if my math is correct. 100% efficient. I Frank think he so. has an assist. Well, Joe Zakic has been the story for Colorado. Let's see if we can take a look at this head and shoulders goal here. Great play by Kaminsky along the wall to absorb that check from McSorley. Dishes it off to Denmark. And look at Zakic. Body control reaches back. Scoops it into the empty net. That's the kind of night that Joe Sackick has had. Controlled the puck, finished off the plays. He is the main reason this game is tied at two. Mirbold holding, two-minute minor at 6.47. It'll give the Kings their fifth power play opportunity of the contest. Gretzky, Yakimenev, Kristic. Up front for the power play, although Yakimenev now trying to skate something off of his right foot, it seems, as he works his way over to Rob Schick. Chick's going to give him a half a second to adjust, it looks like. Yeah, somebody else is going to have to come out. He's obviously lost an edge or something because uh, he wasn't able to stand up properly, brought it to the referee's attention, and now Yari Curry will come out there for this power play. Yari Curry, number eight all-time in goals, 565 goals. You talked about Gretzky liking passing the puck to somebody. You think Curry was the recipient just a few times, partner? A couple hundred times. Yeah. <laughs> he knows this power play pretty well. No kidding. Curry and Gretzky not on the same line, though, this year, and Larry Robinson system. Curry and Gretzky together on the power play. In front, trying to slip it through the crease. Gretzky to right goal. Pardon me, Kristic. And it's cleared away. Now up ahead, Kristic. Kristic and Gretzky working. Gretzky leaves for Curry. Curry backhand in traffic. Bouncing puck in front. Still free. Trying to freeze it. With Stefan Fassett with help from Scott Young. He got some help. It was almost a little bit too late. But great play by the Kings, and they didn't have enough of this last year or the year before. Yari Curry made a great play on the backhand. So many players are reluctant to use the backhand. He'll get the pass here. He'll get his head up. He sees his man going to the net. He's not trying to score here. He's trying to get a rebound chance for Dimitri Kristic. A good job there by Fassett, not allowing Kristic to get to that loose puck. And then Clem was over, able to get over there and eliminate uh, Kristic from the side. But it was made by Yari Curry. You see the numbers. That man is a very smart hockey player. And the two names that ahead of him on the list. Two pretty good right wingers. Yeah. Gordy Howe and Guy Lafleur. Wow. Nick Sorley to the point. One minute, 23 seconds left on the power play. Whistle off the play. Tony Granato got tangled up with Mike Ricci. It is Ricci who had Granato's stick. And it looks as if Tony Granato is working his way towards the penalty box. Indeed, that's the case. So goodbye, Kings power play. Well, Tony Granato was fit to be tied, but actually it was Richie, Richie who was fit to be tied. <laughs> Granato was stick right underneath his arm and did a pretty good job of holding on to it, too. You know somebody's got to get the penalty when the referee turns around. Let's see if we can pick it up. There's 21, and there's Ricci going down. The stick is under his arm. They just got tangled up away from the play. Tony Granato is upset, and Ricci made it look good, I guess. And uh, it's 
it's uh, an even up kind of situation here now they'll play four on four for a little while with Granado in the penalty box yeah one minute and 23 seconds remaining on the minor penalty to number 55 Andres Mirvold from Norway of the Colorado Avalanche and of course a two minute minor for interference on Tony Granado Pretty uh, penalty-free game, though, as you mentioned earlier, Brian. Good to see both teams generating a lot of offensive opportunities. 28 shots for the Kings, 22 for Colorado. Robert Long working in front of John Slaney, kept in by Dennis Segura. Now for set. They'll lead and get some help behind the net. Oh, Luke Puck, Drew's one-timer pad save made by Fassett. Miscommunication, and Drew's trying to take advantage. Valeri Kamensky. That was well deflected by Robert Lung. I think he got a piece of that one. That's what turned it over and gave Drew's that chance. Here's Lung again. And to work around the youngster, John Slaney. Drew's on the backhand. Slaney's there, and headman's it to Joe Sackett. Sackett works oh, at the blue line around John Drews. Yeah, he left Drews in his footsteps, didn't he? I'll say. He was leaning completely the wrong way. Sackett can move back and forth in such a small space. We really saw it there at the blue line. Uh, no offense to Quebec, but now that Sackett is playing in Denver, the attention that he's going to get around the NHL is going to be even that much more so. We all know the name Joe Sackett. We saw what Quebec did one year ago, the second best record in the league, 30-13-5. And, and I really think he is going to become more of a household name this season. You agree, Brian? Absolutely. I think certainly in the United States. He's well known in Canada, but I think it'll transfer down here to the U.S. right. Drop pass back to McSorley. Save made by Fassette. Sador trying to retreat. Odd man situation up ahead. Pass too far for Mirbold, who had just come out of the penalty box. Loose puck thrown wide of the net. Back the other way. Christich and Gretzky. Gretzky for Christich. Christich shoots just wide. Watch the puck off the boards. Gretzky couldn't get a hold of it. Dimitri Christich was a little tired there. I think he wasn't expecting the puck when he got it. He wasn't able to do with it what he would have liked to. Short power play. Of now eight seconds remaining for the Colorado Avalanche. Daryl Sador plays, and we will be at even strength. Five skaters apiece in just a moment. Some end-to-end -end action there and some tired bodies. It is early in the season. Guys aren't used to it yet, and there were three or four real tired guys out there. There's going to be a tripping on Sylvain Lefebvre. Los Angeles is full strength, but Colorado's about to go a man down. Power play when we return. Jesse. Jesse, you're next. I'm all yours. Save it for the stage, Romeo. Carol always gives it to me straight. Like when she told me about my... I told him about head and shoulders. Regular shampoos just rinse flakes away so they could come back. Head and shoulders helps prevent flakes from even forming. You see the difference? You look great. Thanks, but will it get me this part? Couldn't hurt. Head and shoulders, because great hair can't have flakes. Hey, break a leg. You see, this mouth is working up a hunger. Why not build your own $1.99 meal at Long John Silver's? Hey, fine, I'm a do-it-yourself. So start building with our amazingly crunchy batter-dipped fish, tender chicken, or golden shrimp. I or it. Then add two more favorites, like a baked potato or buttery corn. Choose from 11 amazing tastes. Hey, you want a great $1.99 meal? Build your own and amaze your mouth at Long John Silver's. And remember, clean your tools. We are in Hollywood, and the Kings are playing lights out as the lights go in and out. And it's the City of Angels outside of Los Angeles, the Great Western Forum in Inglewood, California. Game two of our deuce doubleheader, Mike Goldberg, Brian Englom. A 2-2 tie and another power play opportunity for Los Angeles. They're one for five on the evening. Sylvain Lefebvre in the penalty box. Blake, Tockett, Perot, and Eric Lacroix up front. Yari Curry back at the point with Rob Blake. So that was save in the penalty box for tripping. It was along the near side board, kind of at the end of the play. A lot of tired bodies out there, as I mentioned. Lefebvre was one of them. I think that's one of the reasons why he ended up taking that penalty. The set behind. Watch out. Trouble from a streaking Kings player. Loose puck in front. Bounces through the crease and cleared away. Scott Young. Now behind again. It's Tockett trying to center it to Perot. Curry on the backhand across to Blake. Blake looking for Curry. Instead goes Yannick Perot. Perot, top of the circle. Rebound cleared nicely by Fassette. Off the pad and flips with the stick. Now Perot again. Good pass towards Blake. Blake set, shoots, fired, and knocked down in front. Curry keeps it in. Yari Curry having trouble handling at the blue line for a moment. Puck sports free and finally played by John Clem, and he'll throw the zone. The Kings taking a page out of Colorado's power play. Sackett's been on the power play at the point and off, light to, uh, an awful lot 
last tonight. Yari Curry taking a turn. Four forwards out there for the Kings on this power play. Gretzky flips it ahead to Tocket. Tocket number 22. Yachmanev. Now on the far side of the ice surface, Detmars tried to clear. Yachmanev tangling and working hard. Tocket in the corner to Gretzky. Gretzky back. Tocket one-timer. Pass and just score on the rebound. Vitaly Yachmanev has made it 3-2 Los Angeles. Second goal of the evening, both coming on the power play. Vitaly Yachmanov is having quite a night. Wayne Gretzky will throw it out in front. Yachmanov with a great hand is going to go for this rebound and tuck it in on the backhand. Look at that. He sees the leg there. He gets one time at it. And look how happy he is. I'll tell you what happened in the, on this play. Yachmanov actually turned the puck over along the far boards up near the blue line. Blake did a great job of keeping it in. Colorado should have had the puck out over the blue line. And how many times does it come back to haunt you? This time it did. Yachmanov and the boys keep it in. Gretzky starts to play. Yachmanov shovels it into the net. Big play by the game. The goal comes at 10.55 of the third period. Vitaly Yachmanov, his second power play goal. Give the assist to Wayne Gretzky and Rick Tocchet. Two for six with the man advantage to Los Angeles. Kings have regained the lead at 3-1. 33 shots on goal for the Kings this evening thus far. Andre, or pardon me, Anders Mirvold. Goes up the boards, chasing down the loose puck. Sigurev with Sakic on his tail. Sakic goes down hard. Now trying to get it out of his own zone. Kevin Todd, he's poked off the play by Kamenski. Watch out for Joe Sakic. Already two goals this evening. Puck flips into the neutral zone. John, Ch John Slaney will chase down. Craig will land in there to help. Lannon just goes to the side of Byron Defoe in the net tonight for the injured Kelly Rudy. Rudy expected to be out at least about another week with the bad ankle. He was nice enough to join us in the second period up here in the booth. Now Peter Forsberg. Oh, what a great move. Forsberg backhand. Oh, pass save made by Defoe. Oh, my. What an unbelievable play that was. we got to take a look at the replay. We will when we have a chance. Forsberg putting on a show in Defoe. We will have to watch that as well, you know, you'll miss it. Oh, Forsberg, what a move at the blue line. Oh, he had Sidor going the wrong way. I think he outfoxed himself, though. He beat uh, Byron Defoe and then shot right into him. I guess that's why he was number one rookie in points, assist, power play points. Wow. And had a plus 17 plus minus last year. Mick Sorley back in the neutral zone. Just over seven minutes remaining in this third period. Bouncing puck in front of a set. Comes out of his net and advances it towards Claude Lapointe. Lapointe cross ice pass to a streaking Scott Young. Young trying to head man it to Murray. Thrown to the side of the net. Aki Berg working behind the net. Murray pinches. Murray working the youngster. Aki Berg just 18 years old. Troy Murray, the veteran of so many seasons. Go just wide of the net. John Clem fires. Six day. Tock it there to help out for Los Angeles. Granado up ahead to Tockett. Now Granado. Granado bounces off of Murray, flips towards the net. Loose puck on the side. Yannick Perot. Murray helps out. Troy Murray in his 14th NHL season. He takes a lot of pride in coming in one of the best conditioned athletes on his team. Last year did it in Pittsburgh. And in Ottawa, he was recognized for that same thing so many years. A successful player with the Chicago Blackhawks. Well, he's a very heady player. You're absolutely right, Mike. He has to be in that kind of condition. He doesn't have as much blessed with tremendous skills. He's a very intelligent player. He's a great leader. And that's one of the reasons why Colorado wanted him to see over 800 NHL games played. Last year, 33 with Ottawa, 13 with the Penguins up ahead. Here comes Christian. Christian and save made for set. Oh, outstanding by Fissette there. That keeps his team in the running there. They're still down a goal. Watch out, Christian's trying to keep it in. Great scoring opportunities, a couple of big saves. It's a Saturday night of hockey in Los Angeles. You. When disaster strikes. They were bringing the people from the roof down onto the beach. The unexpected becomes reality. 
have this kind of an accident and walk away from it. And lives are on the line. I knew it was a race against time. I had visions of it blowing up. 911 emergency. It was just people flying all over the place. Saving lives and making a difference. Rescue 911 tonight at 9. Nobody can match our deals, and we mean nobody. We're at Doran Auto on Route 73 in Palmyra. We have the latest model pre-owned cars with the best service for as low as $199 down. Adoran is a full-service dealership. We guarantee state inspection and provide up to a three-year warranty. Our easy payment plans fit any budget. Bad credit? No problem. We'll arrange financing with an established lending institution. If you have a job, you'll get credit. Nobody can match our deals, and we mean nobody. Adoran Auto, 209 Route 73 in Palmyra. Of the year last year. Peter Forsberg, look at the move on Sador. Sador is going the wrong way. Comes in all alone on the goaltender. Byron Defoe puts it underneath him and it clanked off the post. It went underneath him but didn't go in. Wow. And in the other way, good save made by Stefan Fassett. Five minutes and 34 seconds remaining in the third period. John Drews on the four check trying to get a piece of Sylvain Lefebvre. He touches up. We'll have an icing on the play. Well, if you remember that uh, Forsberg, of course, was rookie of the year last year. Daryl Sador did not play against him. They were in different conferences and with a short season they never right. saw. So Sador just got introduced to Forsberg. Here's Forsberg coming to the net. You see it there? He oh. did get a piece of it with the stick. Byron Defoe partially deflected it and went off the post. Then going back the other way, Kristich with a beautiful pass. Perfectly timed. Look at that. He had the defenseman going down the wrong way right on Gretzky's stick and Fassett. Outstanding. Keeps his club in there. Kings are up 3-2. Fassett's doing everything he can. Mark Crawford was very complimentary of Stefan Fassett when you talked to him before the game about the young goaltender. Said he does exactly what we want him to do very mentally into the game. And we've seen two good performances the last two nights on ESPN and ESPN2 respectively from number 35, Stefan Fassett. And speaking of hockey, good doubleheader next week on ESPN2 Wednesday night, 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific. Brendan Shanahan and the Hartford Whalers take on Paul Correa, Chad Kilger, the special K-line of the Anaheim Mighty Ducks from the home of the Whale in Hartford, Connecticut. Then on Thursday, right back here at the Great Western Forum. And I'll tell you what, they are promoing the heck out of this in Vancouver, British Columbia. Pavel Bure and Alexander Milgilmy. They are back on the same team, and they take on the Los Angeles Kings on ESPN2. And there is Peter Forsberg taking the draw with Kevin Todd. Well, Peter Forsberg just introduced himself to uh, Daryl Sador on that great move he put on him. And, and I'm not trying to put down Daryl Sador. I've been in that position. You can get beat by a guy with tremendous skill. He, he just went by Sador and said, hey, hi, I'm, uh, I'm Peter Forsberg. And Byron Defoe said, yeah, I know, you're, I know you're Peter Forsberg, and I got a piece of that one, so I'll come back again. <laughs> Honecker gives chase and another icing call. The interesting thing for the Kings here right here, the entire team, is that under Larry Robinson, they're trying to play a more positional game, and they have to think their way through it a bit more than they have the last couple of years. In this type of situation where they're up by one goal with five minutes to go, Larry wants his players thinking, and you can see him thinking right now, who do I want out there? Sometimes when you think too much and don't move your feet, you leave yourself susceptible defensively. But this will be one of the first of many tests that the Kings will go through, and they're going to have to pass this one if they're going to hang on to this 3-2 lead. Sackick on the draw for Colorado. Wins it, gets it back to the point. Mirbold shot deflected by Defoe with a blocker. Now Sackick works. Leaves for Kamensky. Cross ice. John Clem. His shot goes wide of the net. Kamensky tangling with his counterpart, number 13, Robert Long. Clem just fires to the side of the foe. Played there by Los Angeles. Head man, but not out of the zone. Bouncing puck handled nicely by Sackick. He made that look easy. Also, now Sador. Sackick in traffic. He's not big, but he does the same thing Gretzky does. He uses his body effectively to screen opponents off the puck. And it's unbelievable how much pressure that puts on when a guy's going back and forth like that, just controlling the puck. He's not in any hurry to throw it out blindly in front of the net. He's waiting for someone to get open. If they don't, he just hangs on. That's tremendous time, and you're wearing out the, the Kings defensemen. You're getting them up tight. Up tight. Sackett's been doing it all night. McSorley waits to touch up, icing on the play. 18 remains in the third. Kings lead at home. Oh, you didn't get tomatoes? Nah, I've been kind of a rut lately. You know, I thought I'd mix it up a little bit. Whopper, no tomatoes. Change your pace. Exactly. Expecting to weave and you bob. Mm hmm They're thinking zig, use egg. Yeah. You're a bold man.
the Whopper. It always tastes great because it's always fixed your way. With fries and a drink for just $2.99. Every day at Burger King. So, you out of your rut? I believe I am. You're rutless. Enough with the ruts. You've been ejected from the rutmobile. No ruts, no glory. As a rule, engines develop good torque only when you push hard on the accelerator. But even at idle speed, a Dodge Magnum V8 can pull not only this loaded Ram 1500, but this loaded 2500, and a loaded 3500 as well. 15 tons. That's because every Ram truck has to pull much more than its own weight, even at idle speed. That's our rule. Dodge Ram. The rules have changed. There's the centerman from Sweden, Peter Forsberg, 94 gold medalist. And it is great news for hockey in general, I think, Brian, that the NHL players will participate in the forthcoming Olympic Games Absolutely. in Japan. That is outstanding news. It's going to be so exciting. And Peter Forsberg scored that goal in uh, the shootout in the Olympics against uh, Corey Hirsch of Canada. One of the most exciting times in the history of Olympic hockey. And uh, a lot of NHL players will have a chance to participate next time around. Renato Headman for Yannick Perot. Renato, a 1988 member of the U.S. Olympic team. You know, the effect that the Dream Team had on the already popular NBA was fantastic with Michael Jordan, Patrick Ewing, and all the stars of the NBA playing for the first time in Barcelona. And I hope that the NHL will see an equally positive effect. Of course, Gary Bettman was with the NBA when the Olympic Dream Team concept came up, and he really was the man who pioneered and kind of pushed this usage of stopping the NHL season and working towards the Olympics, wanting to get the game a more globular popularity. That's right, and the owners deserve a lot of credit. The, the, the NHL is going to take a 16-day break, and uh, they're just going to delay everything so these guys can go over and play in the Olympics. It's going to be absolutely outstanding. The difference from basketball, of course, Mike, is to the best of my knowledge, every guy that was involved was playing for the U.S. In this case, obviously, just great world-class players in the NHL. From for every team that will be represented over there, so a lot of guys will be going over there. And, of course, the NBA was in their offseason. Yeah. Could have had to yuck minutes. The NHL, obviously, in hockey, is part of the Winter Olympic Games as opposed to the Summer Olympic Games, and it makes a big difference. The guys sacrificing a lot, especially those who are sitting at home. Scott Young in traffic. Good back check by the youngster who has two goals tonight. Vitaly Yachmanen. Up ahead, Gretzky. Gretzky works it, keeps it in the zone. Gretzky tries to get it across. Intercepted by Sackett. Watch for Zoe Shackett. Being chased down by Gretzky. Stops in front of the great one. Gretzky doing a great job on the back check. Sackett did a great job exploding through the neutral zone, too, and I think Wayne may have gotten away with a little trip there. He did well defensively to get back and covered up for Sean O'Donnell, who was beaten wide by Sackett, that tremendous burst of speed. Gretzky pulled the feet up from underneath Sackett when he put the brakes on, but there was no help support coming from Colorado, so no scoring chance. Sackett continues to put a show on you. That's great. And Pat Conacher had the first goal of the contest, tries to flip it, checked off the play by Sylvain Lefebvre. Now Yari Curry back behind the Conacher. Conacher clips it in front off the shoulder of Kevin Todd. Kept in by McSorley. Decision drives him into the boards. Under two minutes remains at the forum opening night here in Los Angeles. The Kings struggled so dearly at home one year ago. And they're looking to get off in the right foot tonight in Inglewood. It might be opening night, but it has been an intense performance by these Los Angeles Kings for their new head coach, Larry Robinson. Well, there's the big guy, Marty McSorley, and he's ready for another bang-up season. He came into camp at 235 pounds, but only 11% body fat. That's down 4% from last year. This guy is always in shape. I'm telling you, he can go bear hunting with his bare hands. He's a tough, tough guy. He missed the last three preseason games. He got into a world-class oh. scrap with Sandy McCarthy ever. against the Calgary Flames, and they went at it. He missed the last couple of games. I don't know if he was shaken up or had an injury. He won't say. Nobody will say, but he's played a solid game here tonight. He is playing defense. Larry Robinson said at the beginning of the season he thought he was going to use Marty on the wing. It hasn't turned out that way, and he's played all night on defense here tonight. Yesterday during practice, Robinson on two or three occasions went up to Marty McSorley and gave him just the smallest little hit. Turn your body this way. Taking a great interest in Marty McSorley's year quickly. Robinson obviously knows McSorley an important part of the puzzle this year. Oh, absolutely. He can beats an awful lot. We talked about his ability to make plays, which is overlooked, but it's, uh, the fact of how tough he is physically is certainly not overlooked. Kevin Todd taking advantage of some open ice. Gets to the puck first. Andre Kovalenko drives him into the boards. Will Lannon flips it ahead to Mike Ricci. 
Dead Marsh. Dead Marsh at the blue line, deflected away. Loose puck still. Watch out. Whistle and an offside on Colorado. The Kings doing an excellent job here. The Avalanche are very intense. They're trying to come up with this goal. They need to tie things up with a minute and seven seconds to go. But the Kings are doing a good job of controlling the puck. They're not just dumping and chasing and trying to sit in a shell-like formation waiting for Colorado to come up the ice. The secret's a good defense. It's pressure in the offensive and in the neutral zone. Larry Robinson is starting to get that message across. He's working here tonight. Two goals on the evening for Vitaly Yakmanev. He has the lone score here in the third period. It came on the power play from Wayne Gretzky and Rick Tocchet at 10.55 to give the Kings their 3-2 lead. Two goals scored by Colorado, both coming off the stick of Joe Sackick, and there goes the goaltender. Step on for set for the extra attacker with a full minute remaining in the third period. Pat Conacher has the other L.A. tally. Played back to Andres Mirbold. The net is empty. Fired ahead, Sean O'Donnell. Flips it back into the Colorado zone. John Slaney trying to spread the pass. Here comes Granado with the open net. Has Tockett in front. Gets it to Tockett on the forehand. He scores. Kings lead 4-2. Unselfish play by Granado. The Kings have the two-goal pass. Fitting finish here for the Kings, I think, who have done an excellent job in this game. Tony Granato with a two-on-one, an empty net. You can see Mirabal go down. He did a good job. He took away the initial pass, but talking was smart. He put the brakes on so that Mirabal sliding into the corner would be out of the play. Talking pulled back, gave Tony Granato something to pass to. He had to reach back for it. Granato made the pass where he had to, the only place he could. Talkett understood that unspoken language. It resulted in an empty net goal. You know, it is an empty net goal, but I think it's a bit apropos on this opening night that Rick Tockett and Tony Granato hook up because he, those two guys, along with Rob Blake, had the most frustration last yeah. year not being able to be in the line. You're right. So many injuries and so much frustration is right. It's great to see them connect that goal. Right behind with now 15 seconds remaining in the period. Gretzky. And Vitaly Yakmanev, Scott Young plays. The Avalanche about to fall to one and one on this new season. Gretzky and the Kings to open up with a victory. As time ticks away here at the Great Western Forum. They are on their feet in Los Angeles. The Kings have opened at home with the win to open the Larry Robinson era. Good, solid work by the Kings and Fissette. The man on your screen right now did his share. There's Vitaly Yekmanev. He certainly did his share with a couple of goals. What a great night he had. Strong performance by Byron Defoe, and there is your star of the game, Yakmanev. They defeat Mark Crawford's Colorado Avalanche. The Kings win 4-2 and game two of our Deuce doubleheader on a Saturday night of hockey in Los Angeles. classes outside today. Great. There are plenty of places for college students to study. Yeah, class outside. All right. Classes outside. Make sure you tell Miller. However, some learning environments are more stimulating than others. <laughs> to learn how you can earn college credit in the Navy. What's that? I thought you told them. I thought you were going to tell them. And get up to $30,000 to finish your degree. Call 1-800-USA-NAVY. Nice of you to join us, Miller. <laughs> Your car's engine was made for the open road. But that's not where it is day in and day out. Stop and go driving can kill an engine by creating deposits and wear that rob performance and shorten engine life. That's why you need the added protection of TM8, a new engine treatment from Valvoline. TM8 coats moving parts with eight friction fighting ingredients, including Teflon. So no matter where you are, your engine will run just like it's on the open road. TM8 from Valvoline. Because driving is more stop than go. Welcome, Dave. It's been a long time. Sure has, Red. You got a spicy chicken sandwich. But here, try this. Not bad. Water? No, thanks. Ooh. Now try a Wendy's spicy chicken. Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich is a whole breast fillet seasoned with Dave's own blend of pepper and spices. It's one very delicious, very spicy sandwich. Please. Ooh. Try Wendy's Spicy Chicken Sandwich and Long Live the King. In 1970, Elton's very first song went gold. Then, Rocket Man went gold. Then, 
103 of his other songs went gold. And now that he's touring with 38 musicians in a small army of stagehands... And uh, how will you be paying? Elton's gone gold. Money? These are gold. Oh, we'll need 371 wake-up calls. After all, nothing's got the power of gold. Drops it in and the game is underway. Great game, huh? Oh, yeah, but listen, I can't talk to you, okay? Because I don't want to miss anything. Well, did you hand me my soda, please? Yeah. It's the left end of the round for another great souvenir. That was my puck. That was my puck. Cool game, huh? Yeah, the coolest game on earth. Did you see that? No. No. Did you plan this? night of the Larry Robinson era and the Kings played some defense. They allowed just 24 shots on goal and they earned the 4-2 victory over the Colorado Avalanche, the game winner with an assist to Wayne Gretzky. Absolutely great work by the Kings here and Vitaly Yakmenov, the young rookie, had a great night. You can see how happy he is. The second goal of the night, that ended up being the game winner. Both on the power play for Yakmenov. The Kings are 1-0. The Avalanche 1-1. One one. What a game we saw tonight as the fans Go home happy in Los Angeles. 4-2 our final, Bill Pito. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Coming up on NHL tonight, we have 11 games, the return of Mario Lemieux, the Devils begin defense of their Stanley Cup, and all the rest, all tonight on NHL Tonight. Bill Pito on NHL tonight. It is great to have you with us. The return of Mario Lemieux playing in a regular season game for the first time since April 11th, 1994. Lemieux may not recognize his teammates. Owner Howard Baldwin took a knife to the Penn's budget in the offseason. The result, both Samuelsons are gone, Luke Robitaille is gone, Kevin Stevens and Sean McEachern are in Boston, and Larry Murphy plays for Toronto. And it was the Maple Leafs opening up against Lemieux and the Penguins. back just 48 seconds in now francis tries to get fancy with a puck turns it over gilmore feeds nedved the Danik nedved brother peter a shot in the goal one nothing leads just over six minutes later pens on the power play lemieux in his familiar home in the circle waiting waiting finds ron francis he shoots and scores it's a 1-1 hockey game two minutes later another pens power play lemieux in the same spot this time he shoots would he score it looks good but Penalty. Yager has knocked down Potvin in front. No goal. After a Matt Sundin goal made it 2-1. Penn shorthanded. Richard Park played a little bit last year. A developing situation. A 2-on-1. Hey! Shoots and scores. His first NHL goal. And it's tied at two. Minute and a half later. Lee's very sloppy. McCown gives it up. Yuskevich will give it up. Gilmore will give it up. Peter Nedvig says thank you very much. And it's 3-2. Still in the first. Francis beats Hendrickson on the draw. Francis, the great pass to Yager. He's got a goal. 4-2 pen. Some analysis. This is how scores score. Yager breaks to the net as soon as the puck is dropped. And the pretty move beats Hotman. Just over a minute left in the first. Todd Gill shot. Stop. Sundin bangs home the rebound. His second goal of the game. Seven goals in the period. 4-3 pens after one. Second period. And power play. Lemieux to Zuboff. First game is a Penguin. Yager gets a rebound. Beats Francis. One time and a bang. 5-3 Pittsburgh. Three minutes later now. Penn shorthanded. Shorthanded. They get a three-on-one. Zuboff to Yager to Zuboff. Zuboff scores. Perfect execution. 6-3 Pittsburgh. More Yager analysis. Watch this move. In motion between his legs. He shot it. Didn't score it, but a great move anyway. Third period, power play. Lemieux to Zuboff, his shot is stopped. But Thomas Sandstrom banks on the rebound, and Pittsburgh goes on to win. Eight to three. Lemieux, four assists. He had six shots on goal. Two goals apiece for Sandstrom and Francis, who also had two assists. Pittsburgh, four for seven on the power play. Two other goals were shorthanded. Yager, who missed most of the preseason with a bad groin, had a goal and two assists. 
Lemieux, numbers. He came back from back surgery on January 26, 1991. Had three assists in that one. In March of 93, Lemieux had a goal and an assist after missing 20 games after being diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease. On February 12, 1994, Lemieux missed 38 games due to a back injury, returned with a goal and an assist. And in this one, Lemieux, after sitting out all of last year, gets four assists. Elsewhere, Panthers and the Devils, the Stanley Cup on display during pre-game activity. The banner raised from last year's Stanley Cup championship. First puck would be dropped by Seinfeld actor Patrick Warburton. He's telling Scott Stevens to Scott focus. Focus. Scott focus. That's what he's gonna say, right? Focus, Scott, focus, focus. And Scott's listening. First period, Thomas just over from the Islanders tries to get a backhander, but John McClain in there shot the gold devils up one zip. Seconds later, Bobby Holik gets out in front and he's got a goal. Devils with two goals in 29 seconds. They're up 2-0. Still in the first period. Dvorak takes a shot, but Martin Bodor there with the stick save. Devils up 2-zip after one. Second period, Bodor. This time, another deflection. Devils still lead 2-0 after two. Third, John Chambers, the pass to McLean. He's got a shot and a goal. Devils up 3-zip. Late in the third, bottom of the screen. Jim Dowd. Right there, call for hooking. Panthers also pull Beezer to add an extra skater. And with Beezer out of the goal, Stefan Richet, a wide open shot, and it is in there. Closer look, Richet gets help off the deflection there, and that one is in as the Devils go on a win, 4 0. Doug McClain losing his first game as head coach of Florida. Brodeur, of course, missed all of preseason because of a contract dispute. He was sharp, although he had to make just 17 saves. Just seven in the final two periods to record the seventh shutout of his career. That's the most shutouts for any goalie in the history of the Devil. Panthers now won seven and two in their history against New Jersey and NHL tonight. Back of the night. Coming up, Philly at Montreal. Would the Legion of Doom doom the Canadians? The answer to that and more as we roll on right after this. Not rages from Reese's. Peanuts, milk chocolate. Caramel, Reese's peanut butter, nut rages. Mmm, give your mouth a party. When it comes to relationships, you're dumping me? Nothing beats confrontation, passion, and the element of surprise. Ow! Mall Rats, rated R. That was romantic, right? Starts Friday, October 20th at theaters everywhere. There's one in person to use when you're extra, extra close. Arid Extra Extra Dry. The one antiperspirant you can trust to give you Arid Double X protection to help stop perspiration before it turns into embarrassing odor. And when you help stop perspiration and odor, who knows what you might start? So come on, go ahead. Use Arid Extra Extra Dry and get a little closer. Your car's engine was made for the open road. But that's not where it is, day in and day out. Stop and go driving can kill an engine by creating deposits and wear that rob performance and shorten engine life. That's why you need the added protection of TM8, a new engine treatment from Valvoline. TM8 coats moving parts with eight friction-fighting ingredients, including Teflon. So no matter where you are, your engine will run just like it's on the open road. TM8 from Valvoline. Because driving is more stop than go. When you're Barry Sanders, one of the quickest men in the NFL, some days it seems like no one can touch you. No one can catch you. No one can even come close. Anyway, coming through. Man, I want to make it easy. Sausage McMuffin with egg, four-minute milers coming through. Now you can convert $2 into two morning fresh sausage McMuffins with egg or two hot, tempting quarter pounders with cheese. But the clock's ticking, so hurry. Hey, look who's here. Hey, Louis Lesky. Slow mo Joe. Barry Sandbag. I had to break today. You know, that music can only mean one thing. Melrose's place is all over the place. Fax Barry Melrose a question or email a question, and Barry will give you some kind of answer. Last year, Montreal traded John LeClaire, Eric Desjardins, and Gilbert Dion to Philly for Mark Recchi. After the trade, LeClaire became a member of the Legion of Doom line that led the Flyers to the Eastern Conference Finals. Desjardins also made a major contribution. Recchi, meanwhile, had 43 points in 39 games with Montreal, but... Canadians still missed the playoffs for the first time in 25 years. Flyers and Canadians 
from the form and the activity. Jacques Plant's son on hand as the Canadians retire his late father's jersey. The ninth Canadian to have his number retired. Patrick Waugh in the net from Montreal. First period. Off the dump in. Waugh turns it over. Patrick Ulean walks in. And, 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 top shelf and a goal. one nothing Flyers just three minutes in. 11 minutes in now. Still one nothing. John LeClaire goes behind the net. Pass finds Lindros. The Legion of Doom has got a goal. 2 nothing Flyers. Watch says. Watch says. Uh, which way did he go? Minute and a half later. Here comes the Legion of Doom. A three on two. Renberg shoots. LeClaire, the former Canadian, got a goal on the rebound. 3 nothing Philly. 1.15 later. The floater at Watt. <laughs> Trickles right through. Rob DeMaio gets credit for the goal. 4 nothing Flyers. Jacques Demers says, what in the world's going on? Second period, more trouble. Brent Fettick gets the pass. Freeze it! Waz already committed. So FedEx able to flip it past the Montreal goal center. 5-0 Flyers. In comes Patrick Lebrecht. Waz, an awful evening. Five goals on just 15 shots. Then Kevin Howard's soft shot to flex back in front. Rod Frendamore with the goal. 6-0 Flyers. Canadians had chances, can't convert. Vincent Dampfus stymied by Hextall. Pierre Turgeon, his first full season in Montreal. Misses the wide open net. Benoit Brunet. Can't score on the breakaway. Turgeon's robbed not once but twice by Hextall. Tough opening night for Waugh as Philly wins it 7-1. Waugh gave up five goals in 22 minutes of play before he got yanked. He's now 1-10-7 in his career against the Flyers. It's the worst defeat ever for Montreal in a season opener. Leclerc one goal and two assists. Rangers and the Whalers, Brendan, Brendan, Shanahan, Shanahan, introducing him, number 94, 94. Kelly Chase, Jeff Bukaboom, I don't see those. And away they go. Whalers, an early chance. Jeff O'Neill showing his speed, winds up, shoots. Richter says, thank you very much. John for a great game, off the faceoff. Stop Kovalev, stop Ferraro, stop Robitaille. Colin Campbell says, you know, I, we, what are we going to do? Second period, more Burke. Messier centers, Pat Verbeek a shot, save Burke. Verbeek another shot, Burke another save. He's not done. Uh-uh, sellout crowd. And watching the Whalers and watching Burke make unreal saves. More Burke, Wayne Presley breaks in behind the D. Burke makes a save. Burke, 31 saves after two periods. Still in the second. Len Wesley in slow motion. Makes a slow motion shot, but it's a hard shot anyway. Way. One of the Whalers after two. Third period. Here's Shanahan. Behind the net. Centers it. Loose puck goes to Kelly Chase. And he's got a goal. 2 nothing Hartford. Whalers run away and high. Nicolation. Hello to Doug Lister. John Burke and the Whalers. An impressive 2 nothing victory over the New York Rangers. 37 saves for Burke. His first shutout since January of 1994. Chase's goal was his first since February of 94. Rangers, though, outshot Hartford 37-29, but the Whalers win their first opener since 1986. Another NHL tonight. Pack of the night. Isles and the Bruins. Introducing the new Fleet Center. First period, Todd Ellick. First year with Boston. He's on the break. Gets it to Kevin Stevens, a former Penguin on the right wing side. Stevens beats Sandy Mulder. First goal ever at the Fleet Center. One-nothing Boston. 26 seconds later, Adam Oates. Two, Cam Neely. Yeah. Bruins up two zip. Islanders on the power play. Palfy the puck to Travis Green. He's got a goal. Isles go down 2-1 after one. Second period. Ray Bork. To Adam Oates. Finds Neely who scores on the deflection. Was his stick too high? Remember, can't be above the crossbar. We have a conversation. We have a conversation and it turns out that the goal would count for Neely. Bruins up 3-1. Still second period. Going to be Todd for Tuesday, the rookie. Wraps around the goal from behind the net. Islanders trail 3-2. Third period now. Fourth. The pass to Neely in front. He finds the back of the net. 14th rear hat trick for Neely. Boston's up 4-2. Still in the third. Wendell Clark, the new Islander. Kirk Muller gets the rebound. He's got a goal. Isles down 4-3. New York on the way back. Healthy. The shot. Lane lock of the save. Loose puck. Travis Green finds it. Oh, we got a tie hockey game. It's a 4-4 hockey game. Isles with a chance to win. Pat Flatley with a chance to win the game. Oh, hit the post. We're going to overtime in OT. Hello, Mike Milbury. Oates finds Ellis who gets the puck in the net. Goal doesn't count because the net was dislodged. Tommy Soderstrom, it turns out, as you watch again, dislodged the net. No goal. Game ends in a 4-4 tie. 
Trivia buffs take note. The first shot in the new Fleet Center was taken by Wendell Clark. Mocker made the first save. Former Bruin Bob Sweeney had the first penalty. Nearly the hat trick. He had a hat trick in the season opener last year. And Milbury, who spent 20 years in the Boston organization, ties his first game as the Islanders coach. Coming up, what else? More highlights. Chicago, one of the Shark Tank to face San Jose. A swing and a miss and much more after this. For years, Don Giovanni's Pizza Restaurant and Cafe has been tempting hungry mouths with their delicious crusts, super sauce with plenty of cheese, and tantalizing toppings served piping hot fresh from the oven. It's the best pizza in town. Eat in, take out, or call for delivery. We also specialize in pasta dishes, dinners, platters, and house specialties, all served daily in our spacious dining room or new cafe. Don't forget our strombolis, hoagies, and steaks. Don Giovanni's has it all. Enjoy Giovanni's Pizza Restaurant and Cafe, 7100 Castor Avenue. It's the best, baby. It's the Breakfast of Champions, Cartoon Network style, Carrot Top AM Mayhem, weekdays 7 to 9, only on Cartoon Network. And stop by Franklin Mills Mall from October 6th through October 27th and receive a free special preview video of Carrot Top's AM Mayhem with $50 or more in purchases from mall merchants. Visit Franklin Mills Mall Information Desk for complete details. And watch Carrot Top's AM Mayhem weekday mornings from 7 to 9, only on Cartoon Network. Prepare yourself for a major bomb threat. The season is here, and so is the magazine that defines it all. ESPN's College Basketball, the best and brightest Bible of hoop stats and team previews, picks and predictions, coaching tips, and crunch time coverage. So if you're a fan or a fanatic, buy it, read it, know your stuff. Because if college hoops is a way of life, then ESPN's College Basketball magazine is your guide. On newsstands October 10th. Welcome back on the fly. Other hockey news, notes, and information. Ottawa acquires restricted free agent Frank Newsel from Calgary. The Senators still have to sign him. Colorado re-signs holdout Scott Young, who was a restricted free agent. And Alexei Yashin, who left Ottawa on Thursday, is playing for Russia's Central Red Army team. Because he's under contract with the Senators, the Senators claim NHL rules prohibit Yashin from playing in Russia. Ottawa GM Randy Sexton says the matter is now in the league's hands. Chicago Blackhawks lost in the Western Conference Finals last year to Detroit, losing three of the four games in overtime. The one big change, the coach, Daryl Sutter, brother out. Craig Hartsburg, who has never been a head coach in the NHL, in Chicago at San Jose. The Sharks essentially the same team that shocked Calgary in the first round of the playoffs last year. Let's take a look at this one. There's Hartsburg, his first NHL game as coach. Early first period, no score, power play. Oslin, who just signed. Clearing attempt, last one by Ed Belfour. Oslin's the goal, Sharks up 1-0. Still one zip, San Jose. Eric Daze, hey, he's got a goal, 1-1. Second period, 2-1 Blackhawks, Probert. Back in the league this, this year to Savard. Great play there, Chicago's up 3-1. Sharks will come back late in the third, 3-2 Chicago. Ragnarsson here, a shot and a goal. Ties the game at three. Then, less than a minute later, Chris Chelios with the game tied at three. He gets the pass and knocks it in there. Give the game winner there to Chelios. Got the great pass from Bernie Nichols. And Chicago goes on a win by the final score of four to three. Blackhawks with four different goal scorers. Shane Donovan, or Sean Donovan, I should say, for San Jose, his first NHL goal. Probert, his first game for Chicago, one assist. Losing the cap. Scoreless in the first period. Pat Peak to Gonchar. Beach Brant Fuhr, who had an awful game. One nothing cap. Second period. Capture shorthanded. Ken Klee with Lee on the breakaway. A shot and a goal with two of the cap. Still in the second period. Blue's not getting it done. Jeff Norton to Jeff Portnall. Oh, he misses. Mike Keenan says, you know, we paid Portnall all that money. And, you know, he, he's got to put the puck in the net. About six seconds left in the second. Kind of wall chuck to Joey Juno. The breakaway as the clock winds down. Yes! And it counts! And the Caps go on a win by the final score of 4-1. to one. Remember, Bondra and Pavanka are playing in the IHL, but the Caps get four goals anyway against Fuhrer. 17 saves for Casey, a goal and an assist for Peak, two assists for Keith Jones. Caps now 6-0-0 against the Blues since March of 1991. Sabres and the Senators. Dominic Hoskins. it off in the corner. Senators still the man advantage and shot right on. Here's the rebound in front. Oh, 
handshake on his backside makes the save on Chorsky. More hot kicks. Denies Cunningworth. Then from his back, kicks away to Puck. And what do we have here? What do we have? We don't know what we have. Third period, game tied at one. Gary Galley, he's got a goal. The Sabres were up 2-1. They win it 3-1, winning Ted Nolan's coaching debut as Buffalo goes on to win 3-1. 38 saves for Hasek. As bad as Ottawa has been, it's the first time Ottawa has ever lost a season opener. Ottawa outshot Buffalo 39-19, but it did not matter. Coming up, Colorado becomes the first team.